Congrats on beating the Outer Wilds DLC. Also happy Twofold Tuesday. Everybody and happy Twofold Tuesday! It's Twofold Tuesday. We're back with Twofold. How's it going? Welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, apologies in advance if I'm a little sleepy because I am, but that will help. That will definitely help. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> thank you very much, and also congratulations on the first, Bob. And thank you for the hydrate. Let me let me start by opening up my monster. I've I've got the peach monster today. I got myself a can of the peach monster, so I am I get to enjoy the peachy goodness this time. If I can open it. I've still not gotten used to opening cans with long nails. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be used to it. Look, there we go. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Somehow. Somehow I got it. <laughs> But hello everybody, Bob, congratulations on the first. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Rika. I, I love seeing you two in chat before the streams even started. <laughs> Just waiting along with the, the Louis Bongos. It's it's always nice to see. And also the, the stealth head pats before I begin as well. It's always very funny because I see it happen and I'm like, wait, am I live? No, okay. <laughs> I'm just being treated. 
But hello, Bob. Hello, Rika. Hello, Akire. Thank you for testing the sound alerts, as always. And Rika, thank you so much for the resub, too, at 16 months. And also, thank you for the congratulations on the Outer Wilds DLC. Oh, it was incredible. I, I love that game. I love that game so much. Like, I, I loved it so much already, but I think the DLC as well added to it did the same thing that the Talos Principle DLC did to the first Talos Principle game and like shot it up on my list of favorite games like it was already up there and then it just got boosted up a little bit higher like I I, I always struggled to think of like my favorite games because I feel like I like so many games of different genres and it doesn't feel fair to like pit them against each other when they're such different styles of games but uh, Outer Wilds is definitely up there now. It's so good. But yes, thank you for the resub. And Grace, no, hello. El Castor Candente, hello. Dr. Anime, hello. Welcome, welcome. Mari, hello. Welcome. <laughs> uh, you, you see Millie, you're on your way. <laughs> and Caps, hello. Yes, me too. Me too. Hold on. Let me... <laughs> Me too. What a what a great thing to do. Yes, I also love celebrating Twofold Tuesday by buying Twofold merch from the LM web store using referral code Lurie. Uh, exclamation point LM. <laughs> Buy Twofold merch. I'm going to. <laughs> but welcome, welcome, and Jack, welcome to Long Nail Problems. Yeah, I'm I'm not used to having long nails because. Like, for the longest time, I, I would bite my nails. See, the problem was, when I when I was younger, uh, more like unlocked Liri lore happening now, when I was younger, I never had, like, a dummy or a pacifier. So I used to suck my thumb, and it got into, like, a... I got into a really, really bad habit of, like, sucking my thumb all the time, like, even when I was too old to really be doing that. So from that, I kind of stopped, like... I, I kept bringing my thumb to my mouth, but I'd be like, I, I can't suck my thumb, I'm too old for this, this is bad. And I'd start like biting on the nails instead. So then I got the horrible habit of biting my nails instead. And it, it just became such a habit that it's like so hard to like break when it started when I was so young. But recently I've, I've been doing really well at not biting my nails and my nails are getting really long now. It's getting to the point where I have to like actively cut them instead of like usually I wouldn't because I'd just bite them when they got too long but I'm having to get used to having nails and it's so weird I keep like I keep feeling like I'm gonna catch it on something and it's I'm so terribly terribly paranoid and cautious <laughs> but it's really nice it's so nice I really love having having longer nails now I need to get some like nail polishes start doing my nails nicely It'd be nice, but yeah, it's it's a lot to get used to. <laughs> but yes, welcome in everybody. Yeah, ex exactly, Grace. No, no, that's a really good way of putting it. My favorite games aren't competing against each other; they're holding hands and supporting each other. Yeah, it's why I always say like, if I say like my top five games or my top ten games, there isn't an order to it. They are all just chilling in this this little room together of my favorite games. Like there, there isn't one like above the other. <laughs> they're they're all they're all on like even footing. It's like you know how there's the podium with like first, second, and third place. My podium is just like a flat surface. <laughs> See how many games can fit on there. Oh, and wannabe weave. Hello as well. Thank you for the hydrate. Let me have another sip. More sippies to start with. Wah. But yes, I'm so excited for more Twofold Tuesday because, like, ever since last week, I just I want to keep playing. <laughs> I want to keep playing it. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit like. Part of me knows that if I'd started this and I wasn't streaming it, I'd probably be done in a day. I would, I would be playing for like an entire day solid. I would just binge the whole game. So in that sense, I think it's nice that I'm streaming it because I get to take my time with it and keep the enjoyment going if, if you know what I mean like it's not over too quickly I get to enjoy 
simmering in the feeling of actively playing twofold for a longer time. <laughs> but I'm I'm so excited. To, I'm, I'm excited. I don't know if excited is the right word. I'm nervous. Nervous excitement as to how things are going to go. Because there, there sure is a lot happening at the moment. It, it, it sure is a time. But yeah, old habits are really hard to get rid of. Especially, like, the fact that it was so ingrained in me from such a young age. And, like, there were, there were so many times as a child where my parents tried to stop me biting my nails. But I didn't want to stop biting my nails at that time because it was kind of like a... I don't know, like like a comfort thing for me, I guess. Like a very a nervous habit, and I was a very nervous child. <laughs> so they they'd get me this um, it was like this varnish stuff. They it was called stop and grow, I think. But it was basically like you know the coating on Nintendo Switch cartridges to make them taste horrible so that children don't eat them. It was basically that flavor, but in like nail varnish form. <laughs> So every day I'd have this like horrible tasting varnish put onto my nails to stop me biting them. But I was so like I was so stubbornly like I don't care about stopping biting my nails that I got used to the flavor of it. <laughs> and it didn't stop me. Like I I managed to like desensitize myself to the horrible bitter flavor. And so it didn't make a difference at all. It it, it didn't help. <laughs> But now it's like, well, I, I actively do want to stop biting my nails, so it's 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 easier. Like, you kind of have to want to do it yourself <laughs> to make it work. Yeah, also, oh, do I want to hear something funny? Always. Always, Barb. I would love to hear something funny. I'm, I'm always here for, for funny things. Uh, oh, you still la launch twofold at least once a week just to reread what's your favorite parts. Oh, I love that though. I love that. I'm. I feel like with visual novels. I don't know. I don't tend to like go back and reread them until a couple of years have passed. I'll I'll wait for like three or four years, and then I will go back and revisit my favorite games because I've usually forgotten enough of the details by then. <laughs> that it makes it like a nice experience again. Uh, oh, Rika, your Larry merch shipped. Oh, let's go. Let's go. It's so exciting. I've been hearing so many reports of orders going out, and I'm, I'm really excited for that. I also saw as well, some people managed to get hold of some of the last bundles at Offkai at Offkai Expo, and seeing the photos of them has been so nice. It's just the little moment of, oh my goodness, that's me. That's me, someone bought little old me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good point as well, actually. Uh, you know what else is on the Studio Elan web store? Um, the the Verpro merch is also on there. And I'm pretty sure that will also count with the, the code Lyri for 10% off. Because <laughs> we're like under the Studio Elan umbrella. So just, just as a little, little thing. I didn't even, like, consider that until now. <laughs> like, hold on. The merch is literally right there. Oh, but it's, uh... The, the code has only just become active, so it, it wouldn't count for the, the anniversary bundle, because that's, that's not on there anymore. And that was a... exclusive. <laughs> well, I say exclusive. I think the merch probably will be available at later dates. It's not going to be, like... That's the end of the merch. You've missed your chance to get it entirely. But uh, it's not going to be as, like... It's it's not going to be as cheap as buying the bundle. <laughs> the bundle put a really nice discount on everything, so... So, yeah, it's it's really nice seeing seeing how many people have gotten the bundles. Because as, as I was signing the postcards, I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I recognize these names. Let me let me draw more hearts on your postcards. <laughs> oh, oh, Bob, people are considering commissioning you to make 3D clothing for their avatars after seeing yours. And and the one you're doing behind the scenes. Ah, the the exclusive one that nobody knows about. Ah, <laughs> that's so cool though. I love that. 
Oh, Suzume, a bad habit you've had since you were a kid is that you keep scratching the, like, top knob bit that connects the ear to the head. Oh, like, yeah, like the little... I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Oh, I, I feel like skin picking is quite a, quite a common habit. Because it's like, it's usually like around the nails as well for skin picking habits, but it can also be anywhere. But I hope you can, I hope you can break the habit at some point if you want to. But a welcome, welcome. And PG, welcome to, welcome in. Could have used that. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I've signed a postcard instead. <laughs> Free piercing. Oh. Uh, Milo, hello! Add pinned message. Oh, you wanted to. Caprice keychains are sold out. Are they? Oh, wait, I, I think I saw. Yeah, I noticed that the Caprice keychains are sold out. I, I kind of wanted one too. <laughs> I'm the kind of person where if I buy keychains for something, I kind of want the whole set. I, I always buy like full sets of things. It's it's actually a really bad habit that I shouldn't do because the amount of anime merch I have, which is I bought an entire blind box like retail package just to get one character from it. I've got so many like rubber straps for anime characters that are like characters I don't care about. I should probably see if I can sell them at some point to be honest. Like <laughs> I have so many. It's like, I'll be here like, oh my goodness, there's Cinderella Girls Idol Master merch. And there's a Frederica Miyamoto in there. Let me buy the whole box to guarantee I get one Frederica. And now I've got all these other characters. I guess they will just sit in my box. Uh, oh, you you bought the Caprice and Millie keychains at Ofkai, along with the two Fallout book. Ah, oh, excellent. Excellent. Oh, you notice that people love Millie. Everyone loves Millie. You were flawed with Capri Sword out first. I think the thing is, um, I think Millie fans are more vocal about it. Caprice fans are just kind of like, well, yes, yes, she, she's my favorite. But it's, it's just like, I, I, I don't know. A little part of me has the theory that uh, people are more vocal about loving Millie because Millie needs the love more. <laughs> she needs the reassurance a bit more because of hashtag girl failure moments. <laughs> Whereas Caprice is fine on her own. She's she's got this. So she people don't need to like actively remind of it as much, maybe. That's that's my theory. <laughs> but I love it. I love them. I love I love all of the characters in this. Except maybe Heather. I want to know Heather's deal. I'm, I'm like, even if she has a good reason for being as awful as she is, it still doesn't excuse it. But I may be a little more willing to like cut her some slack depending on her story. She she might just be awful. I'm, <laughs> I don't know. But it's okay. I'm I'm like fully down the the Darren rabbit hole at the moment. I love him so much. He's so good. <laughs> he reminds me of myself. He reminds me of my younger self, which is why every time he's really anxious about something, I just want to be like, it's okay. It gets better. You get more used to things, it gets better. Trust me. I lived it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to play more. It's it's so good. But yeah, I I, I wanna I wanna get some twofold merch as well. I need to wait until I get paid again, ideally, because uh <laughs> <laughs> Cause I've been I've been spending too much money recently. But uh it's it's kind of funny because my my own merch for the anniversary merchandise, uh mine has still not been shipped out yet because I keep messaging Josh being like, hey, can you add this to my box? Hey, can I also buy this? Can you add this to my box? Hey, can I also get this as well? Can you add this to my box? <laughs> I'm just gonna get a huge shipment of like hundreds worth of merch because I keep seeing Studio Elan merch and being like, oh, can you just add a couple of those as well? I, I want to buy those as well. <laughs> so it does mean uh, my funds are a little lower than they usually would be because I simply cannot resist the allure of um, 
hoarding shiny things. <laughs> but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. It's always such lovely merch. I love it. But yeah. Oh, you'd love to do more olive merch? I hope you do. Um, what, what if... Okay, hear me out here. What if... Olive with the little umbrella hat on a bicycle. That's my merch idea. It's, <laughs> I don't know how you'd make it merch. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's my... That's my pitch to you. I'm just like, okay, hear me out. Olive with a little umbrella hat. That's that's it. That's my entire proposal. <laughs> I think it would be good. I think it would be very good. I think I I would buy it. I would buy like five. <laughs> oh my goodness, Ma! Hello! Thank you for the resub! Thank you so much, the 18 months. Oh my goodness, that's, that's a year and a half. Thank you so much for resubbing. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on in, I hope you're doing well. <gasps> Wait, rainy day collection, that would actually be so cute. You could have it with like, sharing an umbrella. The, the Millie one could be like, Millie is drenched in the rain and Olive is holding an umbrella above her head. And then, Olive and Caprice could be Caprice bringing along the silly umbrella hats. <laughs> okay, okay, we're thinking of things now. <laughs> I'm just inventing my whole imaginary merch line now. Hey, I'll draw it for you. I don't, I'm don't. i really bad at drawing, but I'll draw it for you. Maybe it'll be my, my first proper fan art. I'll, I should do this. I should do this. <laughs> Cooking for real. Oh, Twofold has been on your brain because I'm playing it and then another friend also played it. And then you played it already. Oh, I, I love it. I, I've, I already love it so much so far and I'm not even halfway through. Like, I'm, I'm still in, I'm still in Millie's act two. I still have all of Caprice's route as well to do. And all of the, um, getting to know the, the members of the club too. I'm, I'm still talking to Darren at the moment. I'm still hopefully helping Darren. I love him so much. He's so good. But I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Oh, they only have one umbrella hat, but they snuggle their heads together. Wait, yeah, it's like a small umbrella, but then Caprice artistically modifies it to extend out more <laughs> and then hides underneath it like a little tent. Making like a tent hat now. Wait, that's this is growing in a really weird direction. <laughs> and Ultreflex, hello, welcome, welcome. How's it going? Welcome to the stream. I've I've not started yet. We're talking about the idea of Olive with a little uh, umbrella hat in the rain to protect them. <laughs> but welcome. Wait, wait, Milo, you're right. What am I talking about? My my grow up big and strong Mimo fan art. I forgot about that. Hold on, let me show that. Let me show that on stream. I made I made fan art because uh, I did a charity stream last year, and one of the incentives for the charity stream was that I would do an art stream sometime. And the results of that art stream were interesting to say the least. But I also made a meme, like a Silent Hill meme, with Miho as the um, the cat advert in the subway that's like growing strong and healthy, Minmo. I was like, what if that's Mimo instead? <laughs> so I drew it. Hold on, I can't find it. <laughs> Where did I save this? Where did I save my art? Wait, did I actually save it in my stream folder? I think. Did I? I don't know where I saved this. Hold on, Mimo. Why do I have so many things saved as Mimo? I have too many files on my computer saved as Mimo. What am I doing? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, this isn't what I was looking for but I found this. <laughs> Searching for Mimo. 
yeah, not what I'm looking for at the moment, but very cute either way. Uh, what else? Where is my Mimo? Oh, I found it! I found it! I did save it in my stream folder. I saved it in a folder called Art Streams. But that was very bold of me to presume I would ever do more than one. But uh, here it is! <laughs> my masterpiece! <laughs> My my first official fan art. <laughs> oh, I'm 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 an artiste. Thank you very much. Yes! I'm... <laughs> oh my god! Wow. It's Mimo enough. It's Mimo enough. I've I've uh, the the resolution of the original advert in Silent Hill. Silent Hill two. I think it was two. The original resolution was so bad that I couldn't actually see what it said on the text in the background, so I just made it up. So there's like product availability and packing and like pog spread out across two lines, and then it's Mimo enough, and then four and a half Berg, girlfriend Juliet, girlfriend Aspen, girlfriend Mimo, girlfriend everyone white city. A bunch of gay in the corner, happy women Wednesday. I, th I think I did a good job with it. I'm very proud of this. My masterful fan art. <laughs> also, Tempe, hello. Thank you for the confetti too. And thank you for the hydrate as well, Bob. I need, I need a sippy. Growing strong and healthy. Mimo. <laughs> I worked very hard on it. <laughs> but yes, I, I think I have to try and draw Olive with a big umbrella hat now. I, I must. They're just gonna be looking so, like, uh, like, uncertain, as Caprice is just there with a big grin, like, Yeah, look, you're so protected from the rain now. I'm a genius. Ah, <laughs> uh, that, that stream was fun, though. I'm, it helped me realize that if I do ever do art in the future, it won't be on stream because I feel too self-conscious about how not great I am compared to like everyone I know. I think it's partly just because I I know so many amazing artists that I always compare myself to people who like do this and get paid for it, which is not the kind of thing I should be comparing myself to when I am a a small hobbyist who doesn't practice art. <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun from time to time. Like I I draw some of my own thumbnails. A lot of the time it's just like drawing over like official game art and stuff, but I really like some of the, the thumbnails I've made. Like, I have a bit of artistic skill. I think Caprice would be proud of me. <laughs> Although knowing Caprice, she'd, she'd see me doodle a heart in my notebook and be like, you like art? Join the club. And I would, because I would be <laughs> I would be, if, if Caprice asked me to join the art club, I would feel too bad to say no, so I would say yes. I, like, I wouldn't even, like, hesitate. I'd just be like, okay, sure. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you for the head pads, too. Oh, also, looking at this screen for a long time, one of your favorite shirts looks like olives. And you got it after playing Twofold, but didn't realize until now, oh my goodness, the, the non-bunnery shirt reel. I love that. I love that. Maybe you like subconsciously got it too. The twofold influence. <laughs> Caprice is rapidly approaching my location. <laughs> Just imagining like the, you know, like the, the the gremlin pose with like the big eyes and the arms out. Just Caprice approaching rapidly at high speed. Art club. But also Dima, hello, welcome, welcome. But yes, I've. I've been yapping long enough. Let's let's get back into the game. But yes, as a little reminder, hold on. You know what I'm going to do? Hold on. Caps, could you send the the pinned message again? But um give me a sec. Give me a sec to allow links. Could you could you send that again but with the link to the store attached to it so I can repin it with the store link? <laughs> Okay, I've, I've allowed links for a second. <laughs> if that's okay, I want to I want to I wanna shill properly. <laughs> but it's such a good message. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, it's perfect. <laughs> 
thank you. There we go. That's that's the pin message. Thank you. That's staying up there all stream now. <laughs> but yes, it's a early early Women Wednesday. We've got Two Fault Tuesday. We've got Women Wednesday. Uh, Fox Girl Friday. Uh, what what can we do for the other games? What can we do for Heart of the Woods? There isn't a day of the week that has a G at the start. Hmm. There is just Sapphic Sunday, that's true. That's true, I'll steal that from you, Suzume. <laughs> Sapphic Sunday is real. Uh, what could be Monday? Oh, we could do Maddie Monday. Summer Saturday, yes, we could do that. Uh, hold on, what, what, what days are left? Thursday. I've forgotten the days of the week. Uh, let's, let's just say every day of the week is for women. Just like any day of the week that ends in a Y is for Yuri. I've, I'm saying it. <laughs> there we go. We settled it. We settled it. Any day of the week that ends with a Y is for Yuri. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, let's let's actually play the game. Let's load it up. We're at we're in uh, Millie Act Two at the moment. So here we go. Uh, this this scene is called "Do the Right Thing," which is a little worrying. Wait, I just realized too. I just thought of something because of it being Pride Month. What if I? What if I put my pride hat on? Because Europa U made a a little like lesbian hat asset. I say I say for me. It's it's like it's for everybody, but uh, it was made for me. And I I can't find it. Where is it? Oh, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, actually, I think I want it as like a little hat. Wearing it like sideways, that's a little, hmm. It kind of works. Let's have it tiny in the middle. The tiniest little hat on my head. There we go, I like this. I like this. But yeah, isn't it great? Isn't it great? Look at this. Oh, don't forget my sticky note. Too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I nearly did. I nearly forgot my um, my reassuring hot pink sticky note from Millie. I can't forget that. We all need that on Twofold Tuesdays. Where did I save this? I saved it as h.png. Why did I do that? I need to rename that afterwards. Well, we have this too. Da -da -da. I got my post-it. <laughs> there we go, we're set now. <laughs> Everything you need for a successful Tuple Tuesday. Oh wait, yeah, hanging off the air, that'd be... Yes, there we go. Perfect, perfect. I <laughs> there, that's good. Oh, this is good. This is this is the look. This is this is the look I want to embody. This is perfect. <laughs> but uh, I think, um, hopefully, hopefully, if if you look in my about section on Twitch, I'm pretty sure there should be the link directly to the post in my credit section. There's a lot in my credit section. I like crediting everybody. But yeah, Europa U Pride hat, if you click that, it's the link to the the lesbian hat. 
as an as an asset that anyone can download. It was made last Pride. <laughs> Can't believe it's been a year. It's been a year already. Incredible. Also, yes, there is a summer as well in my Twitch about section. It's it's a very temporary placeholder graphic. Uh, if if you go to Rat's stream or uh, or to Nui's stream. They have like a really pretty graphic set up for the Bellflowers Studio Elan uh, stuff. Mine's a, mine's a placeholder, I just kind of slap some text on there. I'm going to make it prettier at some point. <laughs> but it's in there now. It's in my about section. Am I going to get distracted by my own hat? I think we're going to have to see how this goes because it's very possible I may end up getting distracted by my own hat in this stream. But I will see. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, thank you for, for ruffling up my hair as well. <laughs> oh, thank you for the posture check as well and the hydrate. I, I love that I've gotten so desensitized to monster cans being thrown at my head now that I just kind of let them hit me. And then I'm just like, oh, yeah, I should drink now. But thank you. And we have a big stretch. And a sip of my monster. Sadly, I did not make my tea flask today because I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I'm a smart person who is not prepared today, but it's okay. I don't need it. It's actually funny because I, I woke up fairly early today compared to like how I, how early I usually wake up when I haven't slept much. So I had plenty of time to make tea. I just forgot. <laughs> But it's okay, because I got monster. And I got water. I got a bottle of water as well. I got my bottle of water with me. But anyway, I think it is time. I'm, I'm going to get so distracted by this hat. You know what I'm going to do? I'm... Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Actually, I know exactly what I'm going to do. That's what I'm gonna do. There we go, that, yes. That's what I'm gonna do. Perfect, perfect, perfection. Who needs to see the time? We don't need to see the time, it's fine. <laughs> there we go, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, I, I keep like watching the flag go around when when it's on my ear because it's like kind of in the middle of the screen. At least here, it's like at the side, not to dis not distracting me from the game. But here we go. It's twofold in time. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to do the right thing. <laughs> here we go. It's Quimmers. Is Quimmers, I think. The smell of pretzels and hot coffee fills the air as the crowd moves back and forth through the plaza. The food stalls set up at the other end of the street cast golden light onto the brick. Uh, on, on the brick, why did I say onto? While the holiday tree in the center provides the centerpiece for the festivities. I usually pass by on my way to work, but for once I'm milling about. Every time I see milling about, my brain goes milling about trying to find a quiet area to wait. I check my messages to make sure I've got the place right. Oh my goodness, are they going on a, a definitely, definitely not fake date? Oh. Oh, this is Haley, huh? Hey, are you busy? Kinda, at work, why? We need to talk, what time do you get off? This is ominous sounding. Six, what's up? Okay, meet me at the plaza after your shift. I, what is, oh, I hate texts like this. I despise texts like this. I'm, I, if, if, if I ever get a text that's like this vague, I'm, I panic. <laughs> I'm, I'm always just like, if it's bad news, tell me it's bad stuff. If it's good news, tell me it's good stuff. Cause then at least I know, but. What is this about? I'm, I'm worried. I'm so worried. I sigh. If it weren't for the fact I was just getting out of work anyway, I'd probably have rescheduled for another day. 
I pull my coat around myself a bit and bury my face into my scarf. The heat from the food stalls is helping against the bitter cold, but all the same, I'd really like to get home soon. Are you coming? <laughs> Wait, it's 6.47. This, this is all the... Hey. Okay, there she is. Huh. I nearly jump out of my skin as Haley pops in behind me. She pockets her phone as she approaches and tosses out an empty cup into the nearby trash can. Jeez, please stop sneaking up on me. Haley really is just like a cat. <laughs> Pay more attention to your surroundings. I decide not to point out the obvious contradiction, considering she never goes more than 10 steps without drowning out the world with music. I'll try. So, what's going on? I don't usually respond to cryptic messages asking to meet up. I won't lead you to any secondary locations, <laughs> relax. It'd be easier to if I knew what you wanted to talk about. Exactly. Oh, that. It's about Christmas. What about Christmas? <laughs> oh, they're so oblivious. They're so oblivious. She pauses like I'm supposed to grasp some sort of meaning from that. I return her a look of blank confusion, earning a long sigh in response. <laughs> look, if she's dating Millie, it makes sense to have a Christmas date. And Millie has probably already said there's a Christmas date, because the family's going to want to meet up at Christmas. The, the family which Millie is trying to avoid. Oh, well then. Millie hosts Christmas at her house. Every single year for over 20 years, her and Caprice's family celebrate together. Um, the dynamic's gonna be a little different this year, huh? Hmm. So, about Millie and you. Am I invited to Christmas? Am I invited to the most awkward Christmas dinner of all time? Can my mom come too? <laughs> Uh, tiny detail, but you love how the paper outlines on the characters ripple when they're talking. Yeah, me too. I love when you can tell who's the active character because of the little the little paper outlines. I love it so much. I, I really love the scrapbook style. <laughs> Haley closes her eyes for a long, thoughtful moment. I wait for her to continue, but I'm not sure if it's coming. Uh, about us? She opens her eyes but avoids my gaze. Yeah, what the heck are we going to be doing about Christmas? This is going to be quite interesting. Also, Tim, hello! <laughs> hello to the right and honorable, the current deputy, head of Grand Council, Leary, Leary, streamer, McStreamer, face, Mimo lover, 14. Peyton Penning. No, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm, I would be the, the head of the Grand Council. Maybe, maybe head of Puzzle Council. I think I, I I think I'm honourable. I don't I don't think I'm a, I would be a deputy. What would I be? Yeah, I'll, I'll be the the head of the puzzle council, please. <laughs> and the, the, the current uh, pink-haired cat girl from the UK. Add that to the title. Make it longer. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. How's it going? How's it going? I always forget off guy Sam's full name. I'm just like Sam Joe. That's, that's enough to remember. <laughs> but welcome, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. Featuring Christmas. I'm, I really have been playing these games at the, the complete opposite time of year to what I should be, but that's okay. You can drop the act. <gasps> I'm not gonna tell the others about your fake relationship dating whatever you have going on. She knows, of course she knows. Of course she would know. <laughs> she is perceptive. Her voice stays completely level. She doesn't even raise her eyebrows or look particularly concerned. As for me, I feel my heart drop to the pit of my stomach. 
in a way, it was expected. Being caught in a lie, regardless of intention, weighs on my shoulders. You... knew? <laughs> Obviously. Obviously, I... Th Man... Here, I thought we were doing a pretty good job of it. Sorta. Of. Sorta? Of? She shrugs like that's explanation enough. Anyway, that's not the point. Not entirely. Uh -huh. Yeah, the point is what the heck is going to happen over Christmas. Because I, I feel like if Millie has been doing this for basically her entire life, It's like, it's the kind of tradition I think she would regret if she didn't do it because of the situation. But she's not going to realize that, I don't think. She's, she's very... <laughs> I can, I can say this because I'm the same. She is fiercely stubborn, possibly to the point where it becomes detrimental. She's, <laughs> she's persistent and stubborn. And I, I don't think she's going to very easily fold to the idea of maybe she's like holding on to this a little too tightly, maybe. <laughs> it's like she's made up her decision and that is like her mind forever now, in, in her mind, I think. She's like, she's decided she doesn't like this wedding relationship. And so she's not even like entertaining the thought of it being okay. She's already decided. She is firmly like in that mindset. And that's, that's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. We need to, like, ease her out of that mindset, but in a way where she doesn't get defensive and retreat further into it. <laughs> uh... Wow, she and Caprice really are alike in that case. Yeah, I feel like they're both very, very fiercely stubborn. But it's like... I don't, I don't know, it's... <laughs> I feel like you have to be quite strong-minded to get along well with another strong-minded person in a way that's just, that's not just like being a pushover entirely. I don't know. I don't know exactly how I'm trying to word this. I, I have the thought in my head and I can't put it in words. I, if, if I was explaining this later on, I feel like Millie would just come up with a single sentence that sums up my entire thought brain contents at the moment, <laughs> but she's not here. Maybe Haley will do the same. I think I get it. You swoop in and save Millie from her overbearing best friend and clueless family, and she gets to avoid her problems. Uh, that... Yeah, that's kind of it, huh? Huh? All I'm asking is you don't mess up this Christmas thing. Oh. Oh. It's not supposed to be any of my business, but Caprice has been working really hard on this. She's trying to fix things. I can tell. I can tell. I can tell that Caprice is trying so hard. But I have the sinking feeling that the harder Caprice tries, the more defensive Millie gets and the more Millie backs away. Like, Caprice has to ease up a little, but Caprice is not the type to ease up a little. That's the problem here. Like... <laughs> Okay, that's wording it better. Like, Caprice needs to ease up, but I don't think ease up is in Caprice's lexicon. She doesn't know what that means. She is she is very all the time, all the time. I, <laughs> I don't think she'd know how to ease up. But, like, the more she pushes, the further away Millie gets. Like, it's... It's such an awkward situation. It's such a painful situation to, to look at. Exactly, it's a unstoppable force meets immovable object. <laughs> and it's, it's like Caprice needs to stop pushing for Millie to get a bit closer. But because of Caprice's pushing, Millie's just getting further back. And it's like the more it stays this way, the worse it's going to get. It's, it's so hard. They really do need a mediator in this situation, I think. Because it's the kind of thing that Caprice wouldn't even notice, too. She'd just be like, well, I'm just trying to help. And if I do nothing, then there's going to be no help. I've got to keep helping. I've got to keep pushing. Not realizing that it's not helping. <laughs> Ugh, I love everyone. If Millie keeps running away, 
nothing will improve. Yeah, it's true. It's like the more Millie avoids things, the further away she gets, the harder it's going to be to get back to that state. It's just like getting getting worse, like the pressure keeps building up. And it's gonna like build up to a point where everyone snaps, I feel, if something is not done about this. <sighs> the sense of guilt and shame fades away with every sentence, replaced with something else. Something stronger that pounds in my chest. You don't have any idea what you're talking about. They're getting defensive. They're getting defensive over Millie. This is very sweet. It's maybe they're maybe getting a bit emotional here. I'm I can't wait to see what happens here. Huh? Did you really call me out here to help protect Caprice? To defend this whole marriage thing? She meets my gaze. Once again, there isn't a hint of malice or anger. Instead, I'm almost taken aback by how calmly she regards me, even as I feel myself getting worked up. I take a deep breath. Whatever Haley's reasoning, she's listening. She's not trying to meddle for the sake of it, and she's just as much a friend to Millie as she is Caprice. Yeah, Olive, you're, you're a little bit biased at the moment because you've, you've heard all of Millie's side of the story and not really Caprice's. You might want to figure out the whole picture, but it, it does make sense. She's not trying to take sides. I know you're trying to look out for them. You have to trust a Millie too. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> but does she? Does she? Does she really? I'm I'm not sure. Does she? <laughs> okay, I've got the Haley brain cell this time. It's not a challenge. It's not judgment. Haley looks to me for assurance. Yeah. She's not running away to avoid her problems. She's trying to work through things in her own way. And no one is letting her. Yeah, because Caprice keeps pushing. It's this is this is what I was saying to I This is what I was saying too, but it's being worded so much better. Because it's not just me letting my brain word salad out. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I did. I did say Haley was a cat. <laughs> I guess it makes sense. Same brain cell. Me, me going out in public with my headphones on, ignoring the world. Wow, I can't believe I have things in common with Haley. What's happening? <laughs> to be honest, though, kind of rude to go behind Millie's back to convert the only person who's on her side. A, a little bit, but I, I don't get the impression that Haley's trying to do that. I don't think she's like actively trying to like convert Olive from Millie's side. She's like genuinely just trying to piece this all together because she's seen the effect it's having on everybody, including her. So it's like I can I can see it's not from like a a place of malice or anything. But uh I she is very much pushing Caprice's side here versus Millie's side but I, I feel like that's probably easier too like if Millie is being very avoidant she's not going to know Millie's side as much like we're lucky that Millie opened up to Olive in the first place because otherwise Millie would still be bottling this up and um unbottling other things probably <laughs> Haley deserves a hang in their stick of putting up with both sides. You know what, you're right, you're right. Hold on. Hang in there, Haley. You, you, you deserve this. You need this at the moment. I can't even imagine living with them through this. It, oh, I, I feel bad for her. Hang in there, Haley. Ah. Even you being here is proof of everything going on. Yeah. Haley nods patiently. I wonder how many times Millie's had to have this conversation for her own sake. 
It's something she's mentioned before, the constant asking to move on, the push to just try, the request to put up with things that are overwhelming in their own right. It's no wonder she asked me to be there for her. Fake partner or not, I might be the only person who isn't asking her to change how she feels. Yeah, I think Haley's trying to help Millie here. It's just that she disagrees with the methodology. Don't think she's taking Caprice's side or anything. Yeah, I think so too. It's like Haley is, she even said herself, she's not taking sides here, but she's seeing, she's gonna be seeing a lot from Caprice's side because of Caprice not avoiding the situation and Millie being very like, probably shutting down when the conversation's brought up. Like Haley has probably tried to talk to Millie and Millie will just be like, no, don't, don't want to talk about this. Don't want to think about this. Shut up. Goodbye. She's a very neutral. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Haley's a neutral party in this. Yeah. That's exactly what I was about to say. I feel like Haley's very neutral. She's like, she wants what's best for everybody. She's she's not like one side over the other. She's using the knowledge she has to try and figure out how to work this out. Which is really hard when you don't get the full picture. And I'm I'm really happy they're able to have this conversation. I'm so glad. It's so nice. Oh, Bob! Thank you for the luck! Thank you for the luck. I hope the work goes well. I'll send you all my focus beams. <laughs> but I hope your work goes well. I hope you're able to, to focus properly. But thank you for stopping in. And Black Vault's the third. Hello! Yes, exactly. Yeah, Haley's approach here with Olive, particularly the patience and listening without judgment or jumping to conclusions, is 100% what Millie and Caprice need to do with each other. But the problem is, they are both so stubborn, I don't know if they can do that. Genuinely not sure if they can do that. At least, like, without a mediator. I think they need... They need somebody to gently give the other person's perspective in a way that's not too pushy. Like, to go up to Millie and be like, hey, I fully understand what you're doing and why you're so... why this is so hard for you. But Caprice is thinking blah, blah, blah. And then with Caprice, it's like, yes, I look, I understand you're trying to help, but from Millie's perspective, it seems like blah, blah, blah. Like, it's, it's very tricky. Tricky dynamic. Tricky dynamic to work through. <sighs> Millie needs someone on her side. I want to be that person. If she needs somewhere to go or someone to turn to during Christmas, I'm going to be there. <laughs> He's kind of gay all over. <laughs> oh. Oh, I love. I. I. This. This whole situation fills me with so much anxiety. But, in a way of like, I. I can understand everyone's perspective here, which is like, the painful part because there's there's people thinking that the other person's in the wrong, but it's like, I don't think anyone is in the wrong here. It's just a misunderstanding. And uh, <laughs> I just noticed right now that the orange part of Haley's outfit is a whole different layer. Oh yeah, like the jacket, the short sleeve jacket over the, the hoodie. I don't know though, I've seen some like one piece tops that have been like this, like it's all like sewn in together. But yeah, it does look like a, like a short sleeve jacket and a, a hoodie layered to me. Uh, death of the author is a thing, so your personal interpretation doesn't matter to individual readers. Yeah, that's very, that's a very important point to make as well. But uh, I think Haley in this scene actually shows her Millie bias a bit. I think she's overprotective of Millie a bit, which is why she's been hovering around Olive and initiated this conversation instead of just letting Olive handle it themselves. Yeah, honestly, that's what that's what I've been getting from it too. I'm. I think if Haley wasn't worried about Millie, she wouldn't be doing this like if she was worried about caprice i don't think she'd be doing this 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 is an i'm worried about millie situation <laughs> definitely feels like it to me it's, it's like the impression i got going into it it's like Haley 
Uh, Haley knows Caprice's side of the story. Like, I have no doubt on that. I don't feel like Caprice would be the type to bottle it up. She'd be the one being like... She'd just be, like, probably wandering around the, the apartment going, Oh, I'm organizing this thing to cheer Millie up. I hope Millie cheers up soon. I hope she'll come out with me. And Haley's just there nodding, knowing that Millie will probably run away. So I'm pretty sure she's got a handle on Caprice and what Caprice is doing. But not so much Millie. Millie is the type to bottle it up. Millie is the type to, to really, like, shut down in those kind of conversations. So... Like, I, I feel like Haley here is trying to understand Millie's perspective more through Olive. Because I, I, I very, very strongly doubt that Millie is talking to Haley. I feel like conversations with Haley would be Haley going, Millie, everything all right? And Millie going, yep, everything's fine. Don't want to talk about it. Bye. I'm out. <laughs> Uh, interesting angle. Oh, ooh. It's always interesting how people perceive things differently. You see, Haley here is just trying to put them on a level playing field. No, I think that too. I think that too. I think she's really worried about Millie here. And so she's like focusing more on Millie. Yeah, because it's so far out balanced towards Caprice up to this point. Like, that's what I'm thinking too. Like, she's really worried about Millie. She wants to help Millie more. Because... Millie needs the help more to balance this out, I think. It's it's so interesting. It's the kind of thing that's always so interesting when you're talking about like people's thoughts and emotions and reactions to things because emotions are not always rational or logical. Like emotions are you can have emotional reactions. It's I, I sure know I've, I've had my fair share of them. <laughs> so it's not always like a, a logical, rational, just say this and everything's fine. There are there's so much nuance. There are so many small details that need to be considered as well. And it's so difficult. But yeah, it's... I think like this is like Haley trying to get Millie's perspective on things through Olive because... Like, she can tell at this point that Millie has been talking to Olive more than she's probably talking to her, so... <laughs> so it, it makes sense. Oh. I am worried about Christmas now, though. I don't think it would be healthy for Millie to, like, cancel Christmas and avoid Christmas. But I also don't know how far away from Christmas we are. It's, it's a lot of stuff to work through in a very short amount of time, which she might not be up for. I'm just worried that, like, Christmas is going to make things worse either way. I'm not going to ask her to go back or make up or try to make things work. I can't. I just want to help her get space to work things out on her own. Yeah, and I think that's what she needs. She needs that space. And Caprice is not letting her have that space. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Ha! Huh. Good talk. The response is so simple. My gut reaction is telling me she doesn't really believe me. In reality, though, Haley smiles. You're right. Or she's right. Whatever. She puts her hands in her pockets after that simple statement. Every part of me wants to ask more if she's being honest or not, or how she's feeling, but I don't think Haley would respond either way. I should apologize to her. Oh. <laughs> it's not your fault. None of this is anyone's fault. It's just that Millie's really been on her own lately. What you're asking me to do is... A betrayal? Unthinkable? Nah, no, I get it. I hope you're doing the right thing. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I hope so too. Well, things will probably work out then. Thanks. Like you said, it's not anyone's fault. Everyone's doing their best. And it looks like things aren't as fake as I thought. <laughs> I love how Haley's just like, I know you're fake dating. 
And now Haley's like, I know you're in love with her. Don't worry about it. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> uh, she puts on her headphones. Conversation over, point made. A blush would rise to my face if I wasn't still coming down from the earlier defensiveness. See you. Yeah. See you. I respond to her as she's already leaving, the music playing from her headphones just loud enough to hear as she walks past. The plaza is getting busier by the moment. I feel myself getting a little lost in the crowd as I try to edge my way out, back to the streets to get home. Just as I break through the noise, my phone rings. A now familiar icon front and center. Hey, Millie. Look how they instantly smile. How they... Instantly smiling. Ah. Olive, hey! I didn't catch you at a bad time, did I? Nah. What's up? Well, it's about Christmas. Yeah, I thought this was coming. Deja vu. Deja vu. Been in this place before. Just start like Eurobeat down the street. Millie speaks quietly into the phone as I make my way home through the already dark streets, her voice keeping me company. She talks about how big of a tradition Christmas is, how Caprice and her mom will be there, and how it's usually the highlight of the year. Even if I just heard it all from Haley, it would feel rude to interrupt. Yeah, right, the instant switch in their tone of voice is so cute. It's so cute. You, you see the instant reaction. By the time I get home, she drops the question. So, I know it's a big ask. Do you have any holiday plans? <laughs> I don't. No. My mom and I will be celebrating a bit early this year, so I'll be free. Oh, I... Uh... I hope this is the right thing to do. I'm I'm so worried. It's standard by this point. It's really hard to turn down the double holiday pay, so we're used to celebrating either a few days early or late. It's quiet for a few moments. The only sign that Millie's still there is a faint shuffling on the other end. You're gonna make me ask it outright, huh? Yep. I smile a little to myself. No, I wouldn't do that. I'll be your plus one. Oh, bless. Ooh. She heaves a giant sigh of relief into the receiver, crackling through into my phone's poor speaker. Oh, I guess, I guess Christmas is still happening. But Olive's gonna be there. I am so nervous. I am... I don't think this is going to go well. I don't know what it is. Call it just a hunch. I don't think this is going to go well. I don't think it's going to go well. But but we'll be there. We'll be there at least. My apartment is cold. I crank the heat on all the way, knowing full well it'll probably take at least a couple hours before it warms up. Have faith, Lyrie. I wish I did. I have faith that things will work out in the end. But... But I am also realistic in my hopes, and... It's like, you, you know what they say, though? Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm still hopeful. I'm still hopeful it's gonna be a lovely Christmas and everything's gonna be really nice. But I'm not banking on it. I'm prepared for if it's not. Oh, thank you for the hydrate too. Let me have some monster. I love how peachy it is. It the peach monster is just It's I feel like it's almost nicer after the sip. Like the the peachy aftertaste is so nice. It just kind of lingers. It's so good. So See you soon. See you. Oh, the 
tenderness in their voice. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. I <laughs> the the smile. The, the it's such a it's such a tender moment. It's just you look at this and you're like you're you're not fake dating. I know you think you are, but you're not fake dating at this point. We can tell. <laughs> it's so gentle. It's such a gentle moment. Oh, one of your favorite screens. Yeah, I know, it's so... Like, just the, the back to back, the eyes turned, the shy smiles, the... The tenderness in their voices, I... Oh, <laughs> I love it. Oh, in the cold of my living room, I start mulling over Christmas gifts. Oh. <gasps> Write her a poem. Anything's a better distraction than thinking too much about the conversation with Haley. Fake relationship or not, I care about Millie. And the extent that I do is starting to feel undeniably real, out of denial. Yes. I'll have to figure it out. <laughs> Haley, I know what you are. I know what you are. <laughs> I'm just imagining Olive trying to write a poem and it's... Not great, but it rhymes. And Millie will be really impressed. Like, I'm so impressed by how you managed to rhyme hold your hand that I demand. Very, very imaginative, Olive. <laughs> I'll have to stamp down any hopes that she feels the same too. No, you don't, you don't. <laughs> but I guess that's also along the lines of the... the Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Just like, if you don't get your hopes up, you don't have to worry about your hopes getting crushed. And then it's just a nice surprise, right? I woke up expecting a text from Millie telling me she was waiting to pick me up outside. I got half of it right, at least. Rather than enjoying the morning in the passenger seat of a heater-equipped car... I'm spending it riding my bike down a city street I'm largely unfamiliar with, the duffel bag across my shoulder making this more uncomfortable than normal. Oh wait, <laughs> thank you for the haiku redeem! Oh my goodness, it's my poetry time now. Yes, Olive would 100% use rhyme zone. Yes, just, just typing in um, Google what rhymes with lovely. <laughs> But a thank you for the haiku redeem! A haiku about fake partners not being fake anymore. It started off fake. Did it? Really? I'm not sure. Either way, it's real. <laughs> or, I thought it was fake. But I'm... Oh, everything I'm thinking of has too many syllables. Hold on. It started off fake. But now, as I hold her hand... I don't think it is. <laughs> Wait, I really like that one, actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna type it, actually. Hold on. There we go, there's- I'm, I'm actually really proud of that haiku, I like that one. It started off fake, but now, as I hold her hand, I don't think it is. <laughs> Genuinely like that one! Really like that one, I'm gonna remember that one. I'm proud of myself. Right, anyway, uh, back to... Bike. I read over her text again every few minutes to reconfirm the address, the rest of the message being entirely foreign to me. Idling rough? What does that even mean? Something about spark plugs? I don't know. Oh, her car's not working, is it? <laughs> Eventually, I find a set of numbers that match up, and the exterior at least looks a like a machinist job. 
Uh, more than eager to escape from the cold, I dismount from my bike and step inside. That was so good. Thank you. I'm glad you think so. I'm I'm genuinely proud of that one. <laughs> Usually I'm just like spitting out words that roughly match the syllables. Oh, I checked it on Junebug. Causes bugs. I got an achievement. Nice. Yeah, I, I like that one. Well, if there was any doubt I was in the right place, the little red car front and center quickly dispels it. Causes bugs. Causes bugs. Tis true. <laughs> I really love the achievement names in this. Causes bugs. Bugs is cars. Millie spots me before I see her, ducking out from behind the car to greet me. Hey there! Sorry for making you meet me out here like this. No problem. It's not too bad out there right now. Junebug doing okay? I shove my hands deep into my coat pockets, lest my shivering give that fib away. Millie beams at me before briefly turning her gaze to the car. She's just fine. Just being proactive to prevent another incident before it happens. You read my text, right? Yeah, uh, understood all of it. 100%. Yes, the the spark plugs had to, um, the, the, be oiled. They had to add the, the blinker fluid. Uh, <laughs> I respond with an ignorant frown. Millie's unsure of how to read it at first, but she eventually replies with a small giggle. Audible movement from the back snaps her out of her smile, turning again to me with an almost apologetic expression. Oh, right. I should probably warn you. Of the man on the other side of the office window, rushing out to meet us the second we manage to make eye contact, I assume. Oh, hi. Yeah, um... Guess it makes sense if it's his place. Uh, hi. Hello, Millie Papa. Wait, uh, Mike? What's his name, Mike? Hey, Mills. Yes. This your plus one, I assume? I remembered his name. I'm so proud. <laughs> Mike and Charlie. I'm remembering. I'm usually so bad with names. Also, Sarah Cat. Hello. Welcome, welcome. What up? What's up, lovely Sarah Cat? How's it going? Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. We're talking about people's emotions and how they sometimes don't make sense. They mostly, I, I feel like emotions rarely make sense, to be honest. <laughs> a deep sigh from his daughter before a forced smile and a small nod. His own grin is much more sincere in comparison. Glad to finally put a face to the... Wait... I know you, don't I? Uh, yeah, from the, the diner with the incident. But don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It goes good. If we're talking emotions, you have a fun update. You're less depressed lately. Let's go! Yes! I'm so happy to hear that. I hope it continues. I hope it continues. I'm so glad you're, you're doing well. Oh, oh, oh! We're 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 getting the protective dad once over. <laughs> he takes a step forward, which makes me instinctively take a step back to maintain the distance. Nonetheless, uh, nevertheless, he leans in, giving me a quick once over. Hmm. Olive, right? From bellhop. Bellhop. He got it half right, at least. <laughs> Actually, Bellhop's a really cute name. <laughs> Bellhops. But yeah, that's me. Good to see you again. He... What's this game? I'm playing Twofold! Twofold is a, a Yuri visual novel. And... Um, everyone has problems. But I feel like they are problems that can be solved. With time and patience. But sadly, a lot of these people do not have much patience. No, I think I think like two people. 
I think like two people, but this game is so good. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> it's so good. Bellhop. Sounds like a flower. A bellflower? Hee hee hee. Ah. But yes, this is a this is a game that's released under the the Bell House uh, publishing branch of Studio Elan, who make all of the Yuri visual novels that I'm talking about all the time, and uh, gently taps the pinned message, uh, buy stuff. <laughs> but uh, this game is incredible. I love this game so much. It's it's like it's making me think so much. It's I love games like this where they really like create conversation topics and things to talk about because everyone has like different interpretations of things because like every everyone's brain works differently people react differently to different things and sometimes it's hard to understand that to get like that understanding for other people it's easy to sympathize but it's really hard to empathize like to to be in someone's shoes so it's always really interesting seeing things and talking about things from different perspectives. And that's, I love it. I love it. That's what I'm here for. I love it. Ah. He, on the other hand, seems fully confident in his feelings, pulling himself upright again with a boastful smile. <laughs> Thought so. <laughs> to think I was shaking your hand a few weeks ago. None the wiser. He. Mike gently taps Millie's arm with his elbow, an act which causes her to grimace. You and your twist endings, huh? Ever the rider. Oh, she doesn't look very happy. This gets an even stronger reaction out of her as she buries her face into her hands. Not entirely immune to his daughter's suffering, his smile softens a little and his posture mellows. Still, Overall, his demeanor now compared to the bell house last time is completely different. I'm not sure if it's due to being in his home turf of the shop, or the fact he was expecting me. Let me borrow your keys. This is gonna give her one last checkup real quick. Won't be more than a few seconds. Millie obliges, wordlessly shoving her keyring into his hand. His expression doesn't falter as he turns to the car, humming this small tune to himself as he opens the driver's side door. In stark contrast, Millie continues to stew in her flustered frustration. You're so dramatic. <laughs> you should feel lucky to have such a doting dad. <laughs> a little pout. I love her pout. If looks could kill, I'd be dead ten times over. The car starting to life is enough to finally pull Millie back into a normal standing position. After a few moments, Mike emerges from the car, poking his head over the roof. Sounds good to me. How about you? Perfect. I owe you one. Well, if you're offering. He cuts the engine and closes the door, tossing Millie her keys as he makes his way over to us again. Come on down and visit more often, okay? The house and the garage had both felt emptier without you lately. Oh, oh. Millie hesitates to respond, instead playing with the keys in her hand. This is the first time all morning I've seen Mike's smile dampen. Things have been busy. Between finals and, you know, my relationship. Sorry, I'll try and be better about it. Oh, uh, it's... <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't blame you or anything. I just swear I could still see little seven-year-old Millie around out of the corner of my eye sometimes. Oh, it's a bit too early for my phantom to be haunting you. He laughs through his nose. <laughs> he doesn't mind have a problem then. He's all over the place nowadays. Out front playing in the snow, excitedly bouncing in place whenever a customer brings a red car in. Playing pinball with Caprice on the old work computer whenever Charlie needed a sitter. You switched tenses. He sighs, setting his smile back in place afterwards. <sighs> Guess I did. Do? Am doing? 
<laughs> Very funny. <laughs> she rolls her eyes, but she's finally matching her dad's smile. No one says anything for a couple seconds, in a moment that's equal parts serene and awkward. So... What's the plan? Are we just gonna meet up at your place this evening? Mike jumps to attention at my question, giving it serious thought once it actually registers. Sorry, just having a sippy. He tilts his head back and forth a few times before an answer seems to fall out of his brain. <laughs> I love the thought of him, like, actively shaking the answer out of his head. He digs into his pocket for another key, passing it to Millie. You two can go on ahead if you want. I've got some business to take care of here. And I was planning to do a grocery run on the way home. Are you sure? I don't mind killing time around town if you wanted to head back together. Nah, no sense suffering out in the cold on my account. No. Millie responds with an understanding nod. Satisfied with that, Mike turns his attention towards me instead. The guest room's a bit of a mess right now. I hate to ask, but are you gonna be good with the couch? Yeah, I'll be fine. Good to hear. I'll pile up a bunch of extra pillows and blankets for you at least. No. He gives a small thumbs up, signaling the end of the conversation. Or so I think, before realization crosses his face and he turns to Millie again. Oh yeah, most probably hungry by now. Make sure his ball is topped up, would you? Mo? Probably hungry? At this hour? His ever-present confidence finally breaks as he delivers a nervous laugh. Dad. Love you. You two have fun. Make sure you give him the grand tour, Mills. He. And he's gone before I even have time to blink. All Millie can muster is a frustrated sigh. I'm so ready to meet Mo. Hold on, I will I will be right back one second. Um I left my water on the other side of my room. And I want a sip of water and not just monsters are hold on. Thank you for the hydrate! Thank you, I got my water now. That's the sound of me taking the cap off my bottle of water. <laughs> Actual hydration hydration, not just monster. Look, it's not all I drink. I promise. I'm proving it. <laughs> Ugh, there we go. He sit up straight again. But uh, thank you for the hydrate! And also, I think it might be Mo time. I hope it's Mo time. I'm so ready to meet Mo. The leisurely drive out of the city and into the suburbs was, as ever with Millie, a calm experience. I think I'm starting to enjoy our trips in her little car. In Junebug! I love Junebug. As she pulls the handbrake up, I get out and retrieve the luggage while she fusses around in the driver's seat. Popping the trunk open, I drag out my modest duffel bag and swing it over my shoulder before hauling out Millie's suitcase, too. Oh, 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 oh. Oh? <laughs> Millie rushes out of the car to assist me, arriving just before the weight of her luggage can tip me over. <laughs> Wait, what? how much did she bring? Sorry, I should have packed more economically. Ugh. Millie packs like me. Millie packs luggage like me. I will go away for a weekend and I will pack for a month. <laughs> I'll just be there like, okay, so I'm, I'm going to be there for three days. So I need at least three outfits. I should probably have another three outfits just in case I fall in a river every day and I'll need more outfits. Let's have a 20 pairs of underwear in case... 
I, I don't even know. I like, I, I always like over prepare. And then I get back home and I'm like, I didn't wear any of this. I don't know why I brought this much with me. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll go to visit my friends and like, we'll spend like an entire day in their house and I will just stay in my pajamas the whole time. <laughs> 20. <laughs> I'm over exaggerating that. I don't think I even own 20 pairs of underpants. I don't. <laughs> But no, it's like, whenever I'm going away somewhere, I'll be like, okay, three days, at least four outfits then. And then I, I I won't even, like, wear them the whole time. Like, I'll take a skirt and I'll wear the same skirt for two days, but I'll still have so many other things with me. I always just... I, I, I always, like, worry about being underprepared, so I overprepare. And then I have to struggle with my luggage. It's not really worth it. Although it's always really funny getting back home after being away from home and like unpacking my case and just hanging half the clothes straight back in my wardrobe because I just didn't even touch them. Like I, I didn't even need them. But I know that like if I didn't take them, I'd be stressed about not having enough stuff. So I, I always, I always take way too much. Wait, uh, no, the, the super dense tungsten cubes. I love the tungsten cubes so much. Those dense little things. I love them. She collects those and brings them with her everywhere for good luck. Or maybe just like one big one. One large tungsten cube. That is like... Barely liftable. Ah, <laughs> uh, also buff Millie! I, yeah, I love the thought of her being really strong. Because she just carries so much stuff around when she has luggage. She grabs me by the arm and lugs both me and her suitcase off the road and into the front yard. See, the thing about me as well is I, I have very strong arm muscles. I can lift quite heavy things. I'm really good with heavy things. The problem is my legs are weaker. So I can lift things quite easily. I don't struggle with like heavy things like that. But if I have to walk with the heavy things, my legs give up before my arms do. <laughs> it's always my legs that are the problem. But uh, I was I was gonna make a joke about like don't skip leg day. I I don't even have leg day. I I don't work out is my problem. I <laughs> I don't exercise as much as I should, and I should do. I should get uh I should get the Miku boxing game. I feel like that would be good for me. I think I'd be able to do it if Miku was uh, encouraging me. <laughs> yeah, best theft protection is just making your luggage too heavy to move. Uh, you'd trade me, you have noodly arms, but legs like tree trunks. Oh, wait, like, do like a, a Gundam combine. We've got like a full muscles <laughs> between us. Also, welcome, welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I have weak weak legs, but strong arms. I can lift very strong things. Oh, very strong things, very heavy things. I am the strong. I can lift the heavy things. But yeah, I, d I don't. I don't struggle with heavy weights with my arms. I'm. I'm stronger than I look. I think I can surprise people, because like there'll be like a bag of groceries or something, and it'll be. Oh, be careful! It's heavy, and I just lift it with one hand. <laughs> my little party trick. She grabs me by the arm and lugs both me and her suitcase off the road and into the front yard. Ugh, I'm such a mess right now. Right now? <laughs> Stressed? No, no, I'm fine. There's just... No, she's stressed. You don't have to deny it, we can tell. She claps her hands together as if to dissipate her frazzled energy. So much family to think about. You know, full house and all. Yeah. Uh, there's the cloud that's been hanging over this entire holiday. Uh, holiday. This morning's diversion did an okay job at distracting me from it in the moment, but it had to come back around sooner or later. It's gonna be one heck of an elephant in that room today. <laughs> Millie's slumped shoulders and heavy sigh agree with me. At least being out here alone for a day will give us both some breathing space. Eager to focus on literally anything else, my gaze turns towards my home for the next few days. I guess Millie's dad managed to stay in an alright area at 
the cost of his commute. Compared to the houses on either side, all that's to be seen regarding the season is a Christmas tree visible through the window and a simple string of lights. Still, something about the simplicity is charming. Yeah, I, re I really like just like having the lights around. Classy, you don't have to go all out all the time. Given how far out of town this is, it made sense to bunk with Millie for a couple of nights rather than have her drive in and out to pick me up each day. What's even more charming, however, is the allure of getting inside and out of the cold. I turn back to Millie, who is managing her luggage. Uh, I can take that for you. Also chivalrous. <laughs> no, you can't. I just watched you try. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> she picks up both my duffel bag and her suitcase like it's nothing, smiling sweetly as she passes me on her way to the front door. <laughs> Yeah, Millie Strong. The effort is appreciated, though. Oh. Okay, then. Millie places my bag down to fetch, her key fetch the keys from her coat. I grab at my bag while she opens the door, determined to, at the very least, carry my own weight. Oh, it's cute. It needs more. I, I want to add... I want to add, like, tinsel and stuff. <laughs> we finally step inside, and I do my part by closing the door behind us. Millie sets her luggage down as gently as she's able, before briefly turning to me to make sure I'm managing okay. Is it mo time? Is it mo time? Millie's expression, usually relaxed and warm, shoots up, uh, shoots up, and her smile widens tenfold, not twofold, in a way that I've only seen when talking shop over writing. <gasps> oh, boy, oh, he's so round. Oh, he's so round. He's so round. Oh. 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 Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh yes, oh yes. Hello. <laughs> Hello, hi. Hello. He's a good boy. Hello, hi. Hello. And then the cat voice is emerging. <laughs> like whenever I talk to Tiffany, I'm like, Hello, who's a good girl? Are you a good girl? Hi, I love you. I love you. <laughs> She spins around quickly to meet the source of the sound. What can best be what can be best described as a sentient orb with cat ears waddles out of the kitchen area. <laughs> He's so round. I love this. The the moment has arrived. Pride month. <laughs> oh, I love him. Their eyes meet and Millie bends down and scoops him up as he approaches struggling more with him than the baggage she was hauling around moments ago. Oh, I missed you, buddy. Jeez, oh, Dad hasn't even been trying to make you follow that diet, huh? Oh. Hey, you gonna introduce me? Millie turns to me, cat still cradled in her arms. Olive, meet Mr. Mo. No. There's a cat under all that flab somewhere, I promise. No, <laughs> She says, freeing one of her hands momentarily to affectionately pat his head. I wanted to bring him with me when Caprice and I moved out for college, but our apartment doesn't allow pets. Oh, Looks like Dad's been spoiling him silly while I've been gone. <laughs> you can say that again. That is a spoiled cat. Nice to meet you, Mr. Mo. Yes, Olive has the pet voice too. Let's go. Let's go. Hello, Mr. Mo. Hi. You're so round, you're so round. Who's a little round boy? Who's a not so little round boy? Hello. <laughs> oh. I love this. Hi. Millie sets him down gently as he begins to fuss in her arms. He approaches me, giving my legs a couple quick sniffs before sauntering away to the couch. 
He likes you. Cat approval. The best approval. I can't imagine how she managed to gather that from our interaction. Olive, that was cat approval. If he didn't like you, he'd be gone. He would not be settling. Anyway, let's start getting settled in. Do you want to store your things in my room for now? Okay. My eyes move around as I gingerly finish a quick lunch of sandwiches in the living room, Millie returning after depositing her finished glass and plate in the kitchen. The noise of the radio, occasionally more static than voice, drones on with the weather report for the day. While the usual bits and pieces collected during a life sit here and there, the place is generally a lot cleaner than I'd expected. From what Haley told me, I would have figured the place to be decked out with festive cheer and lights. Instead, it looks a lot more like what my, my mom and I would put up. The little tree in the corner a small reminder of the season without much fanfare. Oh, I bet Millie's the one who usually does all the decorating, but she's been like this this year, so she hasn't done it. Millie herself looks a bit disappointed. Sorry, there's not much decoration. We're usually more on top of things. Oh, it's okay. I don't mind either way. I think it's cozy. Comfy. I guess that's a word for it. She shrugs and puts a few presents under the tree, stacking them neatly together. When she stands, she looks out the front window with a smile. The weather looks like it'll be good today. You want to explore outside a bit? Dad told me to give you the grand tour, remember? Grab your coat. All right, lead the way. Sounds like a plan. We're going on the tour. Trudging through the snow, I quietly follow Millie's lead as we walk. The expedition is a welcome distraction from the morning's events for her. Now that I have a better lay of the land, I can see that the Clark House is right on the outskirts of the suburb itself. Having struck outwards from the houses behind us, we now walk along the winding train tracks. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the weather report ended up being wrong. While the snowfall isn't bad enough to turn back, the two of us not being that far from the house anyway, it's difficult to see far. It feels all that much more alone out here. So where are we headed? Just to the bridge, the one we drove over on the way here. Aha. Uh -huh. Guess I used to come here often. She gives a nod. We'd walk out here on the way to the convenience store sometimes. Not many other places to go around here without driving into the city. Most of the time, it was more of a matter of me bringing Mom out while Dad was at work during the day. Hey, this is a bit of a shot in the dark, but did you ever have a train set or something similar growing up? <laughs> kind of. These tracks make you nostalgic? Maybe a little. Aww. It's just something small that sprang to mind. She gives a small nod to the side, guiding my gaze to the train tracks on the other side of the railing. Dad had one he kept around. He actually left a few tracks and cars behind when he left. I was never allowed to play with it before then, but it was fun when I could. It's probably still in an old cardboard box somewhere at my mom's. Aww. Ugh, sorry. Sounds like it was more of a collection than a toy for you. Yeah. I don't think I I don't think I ever had a train track growing up. We used to have like a a, a racing car circuit track. <laughs> I remember racing car circuit tracks, but I don't think I ever had a train track. It was it was fast high speed cars instead. And marbles, marble runs. I'd make a, a lot of marble runs. We had loads of like little interconnected plastic things where we could just make a little like marble run set thing and then drop marbles in the top and watch them slide down to the bottom. <laughs> I like the marbles a lot. 
Scale electrics? Yeah, kind of like that, but not like branded. <laughs> like cheaper race cars. And we'd also have like Hot Wheels cars. We'd have like a manual track and Hot Wheels cars and just like push them around with our fingers. <laughs> Going meow, meow. Oh, I wonder if this bridge is real because the image looks like it's train and pedestrian only. I wonder. I wonder if it is. It's nice. Oh, it looks at your old house's attic. Beyblades maybe? Oh, I used to love Beyblades as well. Let it rip! I, I had so much fun with Beyblades. I also, I really used to like the Beyblades cartoon as well. <laughs> the anime. Oh, fond memories. I think so. Yeah. For me, I just like to watch them go by. Aww. I'm about to ask what she means if she had an, an elect... Uh, da -da, if she had an electric set or something, but the sound behind me interrupts me before I can start. Twain? A pair of bright yellow lights shine through the falling snow, a foghorn reverberating through the air as the freight train approaches, looming through the white fog ahead. Welcome to my childhood train set. Choo choo! Oh! This is quite a large train set. <laughs> this is quite big, huh? As the bridge beneath us begins to shake, I find my grip on the railing tightening. Millie, on the other hand, is practically leaning over it entirely. I'd never really appreciated just how giant they actually are until being this close to one as it's moving. I, I would be scared. I would be terrified here. I'm winded as the machine rumbles by, the clattering of the rails and carriages filling my ears. Millie looks on with an expression of childlike excitement. I'm sure no different to the face she'd had at the same scene ten or more years past. Oh, this is, this is sweet. I can't help but smile at the earnest sense of wonder she's managed to keep a hold of into adulthood. Carriage after carriage passes us, Millie's eyes never tearing from the sight. This really is a train set for her, though far larger than the one I'd had. Oh, you used to have train tracks right outside your grandparents' house. Oh, wow. If you were there, you'd be clutching your poor ears. Oh, me too. I can't even imagine how loud that would be. It must be so loud. I'd be scared of the vibrations, to be honest. Like, if, if I was on a bridge with a train going past and it was vibrating that much, I would... I would get off the bridge. <laughs> I'd be scared. I'd be a big baby. After what must be quite a few minutes, it finally passes, leaving the two of us to watch the last of its cargo-laden stock disappear into the snowfall as we transition to the other side of the bridge. The deafening racket slowly fades into the snowy distance, leaving a pleasant silence. That was cool. He... Wasn't it? You don't get to see stuff like that up close in the city, do you? No, not really. Well, I guess it depends where in the city. I mean, you can see trains going past in major cities near train stations, but it's not as picturesque as this. <laughs> it's not going to be as nice a view as this. She's practically buoyant, raising herself up and down on the balls of her feet as she's filled with renewed energy. As she settles down, Millie's excitement turns to a warm smile across her face. Good to know that if we're ever tied on cash, I can just take your train spotter for a day. <laughs> She gives me a gentle push, laughing as she does so. Her smile doesn't go away, but it definitely softens not long after. I don't think Mom quite understood it. She always humored me when I dragged her out here, though. Oh. Her face grows distant, an odd look of nostalgia and sadness crossing her expression. You must miss her a lot, huh? Yeah. 
I do. Oh, it's... <laughs> it's such a bittersweet moment. It's, it's like, it's such a lovely moment for them to share together. But it's... Oh. <laughs> I've never asked before. All this time, every time she's brought up her mom has been in passing. An anecdote, a fond memory, a small touch. Even if she's passed on, almost every aspect of Millie's life has been touched by her in some way. Millie treasures every moment she shared with her mom, that much is clear. I almost feel guilty not asking sooner, seeing her eyes light up with love, the opportunity to share more about her. I slow my walking, turning towards the lake. Millie stands at my side, exhaling a long breath of fog into the air. What was she like? She was... gentle. Very quiet, too. Even as a child, I noticed that. She loved books, taking walks. Uh -huh. She kept a journal. Several, actually. I remember her handwriting was so pretty. I would ask her to write my name for me, over and over, so I could practice it. Oh, that's so cute. It sounds like you were pretty similar. She gives a smile of appreciation at the sentiment, but there's an insincerity to it. I don't know. I don't think I resemble her very much. If I did, I think I'd be... happy for the others? Uh, sorry. I, I don't mean to be a downer. <sighs> Something shifts in Millie, like she snaps out of her head. She turns to me, giving me the same kind of easygoing grin she would use all the time in the writing club. Oh no, that's the mask smile. That's the mask smile. Oh no. Uh-huh. I asked. We should get moving before it gets too cold. Yeah, she's closing off again now. <laughs> and like that, the moment's gone. She's she's shutting off again. <sighs> Quashing down any lingering feelings, Millie doesn't wait for me to agree. She thrusts her hands into her pockets and shakes her head. I want to ask more, or at least give her space to talk if she'd like to. I have to remember I'm just a friend, not a partner, not involved more than I have to be. I wonder if she feels the need to keep, her, keep up her act in front of me because of that. <sighs> the two of us begin the long walk back to her house, me jogging slightly to catch up to her. Neither of us say much, save for some pleasant small talk. I can only hope probably fruitlessly, that tomorrow is just as calm. I... I'm so, I'm so nervous. I'm so worried. <laughs> Last night gave a surprisingly good sleep, all things considered. The house is quite peaceful, a far cry from the ambient noises of sleeping in, uh, sleeping in an apartment building. Aside from leaving me with stiff shoulders, the couch was comfortable enough for me to rest too. <laughs> oh, they look rough. I'm not used to seeing them without their glasses. After a quick stretch, I reach for my glasses, officially ready to start the day. So... Now what? Looking for ways to occupy my idle hands, I reach for the blanket I was using last night and start folding it away. I'll need it again tonight, but I'm sure the living room will be seeing a lot of use and it wouldn't do for the couch to be such a mess. As I'm wrapping up my cleaning, the kitchen behind me starts showing signs of life with the sounds of an early sizzle finding its way to my ears. Breakfast. By her own admission, Millie isn't much of a cook, which narrows down the options pretty significantly. 
I stand up and add the mountain of pillows Mike provided me atop the now folded blanket. Before turning towards the kitchen, I take a few steps over to the entertainment centre to steal a glance at my phone, charging away. It's not even 6.30 yet. Oh my goodness, that's so early. Who knows how long he'd been out here before I woke up. I thought I was a morning person, but not to that extent, and definitely not on a holiday. With that minor curiosity sated, I make my way towards the entranceway of the kitchen. As predicted, he's hunched over a pan, not doing much of anything other than observing it right now. <laughs> you woke up at five for this stream. Thank you. Thank you. I, I know I stream at such early times for the US. I, I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, but also thank you. <laughs> See, uh, like, my, my sleep schedule is so bad that sometimes I will still be awake at 6.30. It's... Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's early enough into the process where whatever he's working on isn't giving off a strong enough aroma to clue me in on what breakfast is going to be yet. Morning. He turns his head, looking as if he'd just seen a ghost, before returning to his typical hard-to-read self. Oh, morning. Didn't wake you, did I? Nah, this is about the standard for me. Early rises. So, um, where should I put all this for now? Um, just put the pile by the stairs. I'll put things away later. Breakfast should be done in 40 minutes or so, give or take. Probably give. Yay! Will do. Should I wake Millie up? <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for a Christmas Day breakup, maybe. <laughs> She'll make her way down eventually. Don't worry. And do not wake the Millie. I feel like she would smell the food and that would wake her up. Him turning back to his pan is enough of a signal that our brief conversation is over. After plopping the bedding off by the stairs as instructed, all I can think to do is return to the couch while I wait for something to eventually pull up my attention as the world starts to wake. And wake it does. Just a few minutes after the house starts smelling of pancake batter, the sound of a door opening can be heard faintly from upstairs. Yes, the food. The drawer of the food. I love her pajamas! Ah! <laughs> Followed by a massive yawn, a loud meow, and then finally the dragging of feet down the steps. Oh, Dad, it's barely seven. I let you sleep in. <laughs> Happy holidays. Good morning. She's so eepy. I love it. I love it. This is me in a morning. I'm I'm not a morning person. I am I am very much an evening person. I feel like I'm I'm more awake like in the evening. Like late afternoon to evening is my like prime time. I'm so bad with mornings. <laughs> Hi. Hi. His laughs from the kitchen drown out any further mumblings from her as she collapses beside me on the couch, her bedtime partner instead choosing to patter his way to Mike's side. Aw, morning, Mo. Morning, Mo. Hi. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Do you want your breakfast? Do you want your breakfast? I'm, I'm, I'm really going in every time... I start talking to Mo, I'm using the Tiffany voice. This is how I speak to Tiffany in the morning. Like, Tiffany will squeak at me and I'll go, Hello? Hello, hi baby. Do you want your breakfast? Do you want your food? Are you hungry? Are you a hungry girl? Come on. Come on. <laughs> the cat voice. He's still dieting. Don't you dare. And it's interesting as well, because I, I feel like I have different voices for cats and dogs. Like, cats are very like, hello, hi, the very high-pitched voice. 
And then when I see dogs, it's more like, hello, he's a, he's a good dog. He's a good dog. It's, it's a little lower pitched. I don't know why it's different, like different pet voices, but it's, it's something I do without even meaning to. It's like whenever I see a dog, I'm just like, hello, hey, he's a, he's a good dog. He's a good dog. Hey. But then cats are always, hi, hello, hi. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. Oh, imagine Tiffany gets jealous. Oh, I just hear her meowing outside my door because I start talking about food in the Tiffany voice. She doesn't get a response and she doesn't push it farther, likely knowing it's a fruitless endeavor. Sleep well. It was going great until a few minutes ago. I wonder if Mo woke her up. Actually, I, I I bet Mo smelt the food and started like scrabbling at the door and meowing. And that's what woke her up. Because I feel like she'd be the type to sleep in till one. <laughs> Another yawn punctuated by her rubbing some sleep from her eyes. I want to feel sympathetic for her, but it's hard not to smile. How about you? I can't imagine it was too comfortable. It could have been worse. Honestly... It might have even been an upgrade. Yeah. I think that says more about your bed than it does the couch. Yeah, probably. When her dad lets her, at least. No, I, I get the impression that her dad would not wake her up. <laughs> or, like, actively wake her up. Like, cooking food is her dad waking her up. Because the the way the way it was like, should I wake Millie up? It's like, not if, not if you... Not if you value your life. <laughs> Probably. He did say he let her sleep in because it's Christmas. Yeah, I, I, t I took that to mean he just starts cooking breakfast earlier. <laughs> we share a brief smile before being interrupted by the clattering of plates. Mike emerges from behind us, plates piled high with pancakes on a tray in one hand, a couple cups of coffee in the other. Mr. Mo close behind. I love you, Mr. Mo. He's so good. Even working in a diner myself for so long, I'd be terrified of carrying around anything even remotely similar, the potential of a mess being almost catastrophic. Whew. The tray finds its way safely to the table before us, with the coffee soon after, hardly a drop out of place. If you don't take your coffee black, just let me know and I can bring out some sweetener. Black works fine for me. Thank you. Sort of figured it would. You seem like the type. <laughs> I have no idea what the implication is there, or if it's supposed to be a compliment. The fact that Millie's cup is an equal shade of dark probably means it isn't an insult, though. Millie wastes no time taking her first sip, desperate for some help with shaking herself awake. With his hands emptied, Mike brushes them together to signify a job well done and turns to make his way back to the kitchen. Are you not having anything? We could eat together. Nah, dinner's gonna be an all-day project ah. in here. You two enjoy yourselves, though. He's gonna be <laughs> in the kitchen the whole time. And with that, he's gone. Millie responds with a sigh before turning the TV on for some white noise and then picking up her plate. I wish she'd slow down at least a little. Huh. Considering the gravity of the situation, I can't help but feel it's exactly because of everything going on that he must be trying so hard. The only reason we're here early is to help out with the festivities, after all. Yeah, I get the feeling that comment is not just about today. That was a very pointed wish. I wish he'd slow down. That is not just about today, I don't think. Still, that wouldn't be a very helpful reply, so I keep it to myself and we enjoy our breakfast together. I do like pancakes. Oh, the music. The morning passes by quickly. 
Between wrapping presents together and running to and from the store to grab ingredients for Mike's dinner recipes, the amount of last minute preparation is more than enough to keep us busy. As late afternoon sneaks up on us, we eventually find a break to return to, uh, to return to where we started the day. Side by side on the couch, Mr. Mo napping comfortably on Millie's lap. It's mostly silent now, the only noises being some faint radio program that Mike's listening to in the kitchen, and the sound of cooking. It's inevitable that eyes start to wander, with mine eventually resting on the numerous shelves underneath the stairs. More pictures line them than I can count, Mike absent from most of them. Him being camera shy seems like the best explanation there. The grand majority of the photos feature Millie at various ages. I feel like he's probably the one taking the photos. <laughs> Another woman can be spotted in several as well. Her red hair still easy to spot even as the pictures she's in have otherwise begun to fade. I wish you could have met her. No. I've been caught staring. Me too. Seemingly given consent to continue my snooping, my eyes return to the shelves. Millie's mom is almost never alone. Nine out of ten pictures pairing her with her daughter, with everything from formal family photos to playing together in the park. She seems like a really special person. Mm-hmm. She's a few degrees quieter than before. I'm not entirely sure if it's due to her trying to pull memories from the back of her mind, or simply wanting to keep the conversation out of her dad's ears. Probably a mix of the two. Remember when I gave you a tour of the apartment and you started poking around my room? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't poking. It kind of was poking. Oh no, it was. Anyway, that old journal in there? It was hers. Oh. Well, uh, ours. She leans back further into the couch, slow enough to not stir Mo. Back when she knew what was coming, oh. she started filling it front oh. to back with things she wanted to say to me. Recipes, messages for every milestone you could think of, countless pages of advice. Oh, that's... oh... oh. We'd fill in some pages together, with me asking questions and her answering them the best she could. That's the kind of person she was. I sink back into the couch as well to try and meet her eyesight better. I feel like I'm somewhere I'm not supposed to be even hearing about its existence. She was so thorough about it too. She had an answer to almost everything. Holding on to what's important, how to be there for someone, dealing with stress. Wow. What to do if dad remarries. Oh, oh. She was already quiet, but that barely even registered as a whisper. Uh. I wish I had more to say in response to that, but what else can even be said? What else can be said? Thank you for the hydrate. Oh, I love the monster can flying at me in a moment like this. Thank you. I love a sippy. A sippy to strengthen myself for emotions. <laughs> she gives Mr. Mo a couple gentle taps, prompting him to crawl off her and into the space between us. With her newfound freedom, Millie stands up to grab a picture from the shelf before returning to my side. Millie's and Caprice's moms, both smiling as wide as they're able, babies cradled in their arms. That one was left blank. I guess she lost her nerves. Oh. <laughs> Did she run out of time? I don't know. Maybe. She strokes the frame a bit with her thumb, slowly and thoughtfully. 
This is, uh... Things were so easy before all this. For all of us. It's so painful. It's... Uh... Oh, I... Snap back to reality. <laughs> hmm. Our heart-to-heart -heart is cut short by the echo of the doorbell throughout the house. Millie jumps up in a panic, placing the photo haphazardly on the table before making a beeline for the stairs. Hey, wait! I'm sorry, I'm not ready yet. Cover for me! Oh, great! Great! Thanks, Millie. Thanks. Great. Okay. And she's gone. Mike makes his way out of the kitchen for the first time since this morning to greet me, gazing briefly up the stairs before turning to the door. Mike takes the lead, twisting the doorknob, revealing Caprice and her mother on the other side. Hey. Hey. Charlie seems so lovely. She's so... Everyone seems so lovely. I'm... Uh, Hi. Not as warm as I'd expect two lovebirds to be. I guess walking on eggshells about the entire thing is sort of inevitable given the circumstances. Olive! Long time no see! Hi! Spotting me from behind Mike's back, Caprice worms her way past him to greet me properly. A worm? Uh, come in. <laughs> hey, uh, you're looking well. She readjusts her hat with a grin in place of the proper response. Still, it's enough to get the picture. With that out of the way, she makes her way to the Christmas tree, setting down a couple gifts under the tree with an amount of care and restraint I would never have thought her capable of. Nice to see you again. I was really excited when I heard you'd be coming over. Oh, she's lovely. Oh, she's so lovely. Oh. Honestly, the fact that she's so lovely and the fact that everyone obviously already knew each other and grew up together probably actually makes it harder for Millie. Like, if if Millie's dad was remarrying somebody horrible, like, it would suck, but she'd have an excuse to feel so mad about it. But when everyone is this lovely, it's... She doesn't have that as, like, a justification for her feelings. <laughs> The sound of a door closing follows right after the voice pulls my attention away from Caprice and towards her parent. Oh, I love, I love Charlie. I love her. <laughs> it's good to see you too, Miss Shifton. A grimace, a not from me for once. Thankfully, her smile returns not long after. Charlie works fine. Looks like Millie's picked out someone just as formal as she is. <laughs> Speaking of which, where is she? Caprice joins in on our little circle forming around the front door after giving the living room a quick scan for her friend. Mike and I answer by turning our eyes up the stairs. I'll go get her. Maybe, uh, um, may, no, no, um, hold on, hold on, please. Yeah, exactly. Such a difficult situation considering that no one involved has any ill will whatsoever. Yeah, that's the part that makes it worse. And I feel like that is something that's really going to make things so much harder for Millie because like, if she had a reason, if she had a solid reason, then she'd feel more justified with her emotions. But she's probably also fighting the fact that she's so upset by this, but that there's no, like, logical reason to be upset by it, because it's nice and everything's fine. Like, that's, that's the kind of thing that makes things so much worse. It's like, if you're feeling bad for a reason, it's not as bad as feeling bad for no reason. Like, feeling bad for no reason is like, well, if there is no reason, you can't do anything about it. <laughs> Whereas if there is a reason, you at least know why you're not feeling good and how to fix it. It's it's very, very awkward. I really feel familiar here. 
That's the first thing I expected and last thing I wanted to hear. Let's just hang down here a bit. Give her a minute, okay? Thank you, Charlie. But... It'll be fine. You wanna help me finish up some things in the kitchen in the meantime, Caprice? Uh. Yeah, okay. I am stunned at how expertly they defused that situation before it even had a chance to ignite. I'd never say as much in front of Millie, but early impressions, sure they make a good pair. I should count my blessings. I don't know how well I'd be able to cover for her, let alone against Caprice's energy, so it's a relief that I didn't have to in the first place. Whew. As Mike and Caprice disappear into the kitchen, Charlie heads the opposite way, propping herself up on the backside of the couch, beckoning me to follow. You sleep okay? Mike's not making you take the couch, is he? Yeah, but it was fine. I just told Millie this morning it was a better sleep than my actual bed. <laughs> well, if you're sure. You and Millie doing okay? I don't hear from her much these days. Uh... A hint of sadness at the tail end of that, but only a hint. Just enough to make me feel bad for lying about us. Couldn't be better. Well, there's some stressful stuff going on, I guess, but... You know what I mean. <laughs> you guess. I do, yeah. After a small sigh, the smile on her face grows. That's a relief to hear. She's been going through a lot, so I was thrilled when I heard she found someone. <laughs> That's not quite the response I expected from the person at the root of most of Millie's stresses. <laughs> uh, hello, thank you for the follow. That uh, sure is a username. Hi. Please don't do that. Thank you. <laughs> But hello. My mind thinks back to the picture of her alongside Millie's mom, and my eyes follow. Charlie takes notice, turning her head back to the photo on the table. Without a word, she props herself up and circles around the couch, picking the photo frame up with the utmost care. Mo? No, that that was my uh my my sound alert. That's my cat. <laughs> you hear a meow on the stream. Uh, whenever there's a follow or a sub, uh, the the sound alert for that on the stream is it's my Tiffany. It's my baby, my little baby, my tiny little baby who's turning twelve. <laughs> I call her a baby. She's getting really old now, but she's always a baby. But no, yeah, Tiffany voiced all of the sound alerts. She is the. The, the voice actor, she has a really squeaky meow, and it's really cute. I, I love her meows. <laughs> but no, the, the, if, you, if you heard the meow, that, that wasn't Mo, that was, that was Tiffany. Not actively. She doesn't like to meow when I'm live, which is really painful, because I would love for her to meow when I'm live. But she always waits until I've ended the stream, and then she starts screaming at me. Every single time. Like, I've even tried doing like a fake out ending for my stream in the hopes that she would then start screaming and the meows will be picked up on mic. And she still knows. She still knows when I'm pretending and I'm not actually live. <laughs> she waits for the raid to go through and then she's just here like, meow, meow. I wish she'd meow. I wish, I wish I could share her squeaks with everybody. She's so squeaky. I love her. Exactly! A cat is always a baby until they get old, then they're an elderly baby. Yeah, a cat is always baby. All cats are babies. Every single cat. Every baby. But she's such a good girl. I, I love my Tiffy. She's, she's very sweet. Without a word, she props herself up and circles around the couch, picking the photo frame up with the utmost care. Thank you for the posture check and hydrate too. Let me have a big stretch. A big stretch and a sip of my drink. Bam bam bam. 
And thank you for the head pat as well. <laughs> That's Mo. <laughs> Mo finally takes notice of her presence, hopping off his resting place and rubbing himself fondly across her leg briefly before making his way back into the kitchen. Someone's been reminiscing. <laughs> Her smile takes on a new meaning, the sorrow in her eyes telling the, full, the, the true story. She brushes slowly at the edge of the frame with her thumb, mirroring, uh, mi mirror, mirror, mirroring, mirroring Millie's movements almost exactly. Were you too close? Yeah, I, I get the impression they were very close. I immediately regret asking. I'm not even sure what I'd do with the answer. Nevertheless, she's all too eager to reply. Adelaide was my best friend. I think about her every day. I hope Millie knows we at least have that much we can still share together. I'm sorry. Nothing to be sorry for. Well, if nothing else, I at least have a name I can put to the face now. Oh, my song lyric brain is really betraying me right now. I, I saw the name Adelaide and my, my mind is full of Anne Boleyn. I'm just going, Adelaide, Adelaide, you really have me going this time. I'm just like, brain, shut up. This is a, this is a significant moment. Stop stop playing pop punk songs in my head. <laughs> Charlie returns the picture to its rightful place, fiddling with the angle a few times before being satisfied enough to walk away and return to the back of the couch. I still don't understand all the details. The entire marriage is one giant blur, but it's hard to believe there's even an ounce of malice intended here. It'd be a lot easier if there was. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying earlier. It's like, it would be so much easier to, f for Millie especially, to feel like her like emotions are justified if there was like a reason behind it. But the fact that everyone is so lovely makes it so much harder. Dinner's done. Oh. Already. Caprice's shout gets a small jump out of me, while Charlie is entirely unfazed. Charlie and I return to the kitchen entrance, meeting up once again with Mike and Caprice. You managed to keep him from burning the house down, it looks like. Hehe. <laughs> if he was gonna do that, it would have already happened. I was just stuck with setting the table. Hmm. Hmm. Dinner time! Hi, Brindley! Hello, you're just in time for dinner time. I can't see how this could possibly go badly. This is going to be lovely. Lovely, fine time. I'm sure. Just a joke. It smells great, Mike. I'm sure. As always, don't get your hopes up. I haven't been practicing much since Millie moved out. Uh, One of these days, we're going to get you to accept a compliment. <laughs> If you ever figure out how, let me know. I've been trying for about 21 years now. Oh, I thought we were going to have to go and get her, but she's she's come down of her own volition. Hi. Hi, Millie. Hi, Millie. She's got the mask smile. She has the mask smile. I love that I can tell now. I'm... I love the way Oliver's smiling as as they see her. There she is. All four of us immediately shift our eyes up the staircase as Millie makes her descent. The gentle smile on her face is undoubtedly a result of her working up the nerves to come back down. It's good to see you. I was worried you were going to miss the entire night. Oh, you know, just wanted to be fashionably late. <laughs> Hard to pull off when you live here, though. Huh... Well, you managed it anyway. Millie laughs under her breath, and the tensions in the room immediately lighten. It's hard to tell if things are really okay, but if both of them are putting in the effort, this night might turn out okay after all. 
tentative optimism, it might be okay. Like, even if people are just, like, putting on a front, even if everyone is just playing along, maybe it can end up being, like, a, a fake it till you make it kind of thing. Like, just... If they pretend everything's okay and they start getting used to it, then it will become okay as they get used to it. Oh, this, this music is incredible. I'm... Maybe it will be okay. I, I was just like dreading this. I was expecting complete and utter tension. There's still time for tension. There still might be. There is still time for everything to fall apart, but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, please. Everyone deserves the best here. Everyone in this room deserves the best. I want it to go well. I want it to go well for their sakes. Dinner went as well as it could have. Kind words catching up, the odd friendly ribbing here and there. There were also a lot of unsubtle pivots away from certain points of discussion as well. It's sweeping the conversation under the rug, but for the sake of the holiday, it was probably for the best. The rest of the evening has been taken up by unwrapping gifts. It's a modest pile, but that just allows people more time to say their thank yous after each one. Millie gifts me a countertop rice cooker, just big enough for a couple cups. Likely due to my recent complaining that mine broke a while back. Oh, that's, that's so thoughtful. In return, I managed to find a hardcover copy of one of her favourite novels after learning she likes to collect special editions of her favourites. Awkward as it is, no one seems to notice or comment on how the most will do after a gift is a pat on the back or a hug. Our individual piles start to grow as the one under the tree continues to shrink. In the end, all that remains is a thin, medium-sized rectangle, from Caprice to Millie. Mike passes it up to her before resuming his place, standing at the edge of the couch next to Charlie. I'm sure Caprice wouldn't gift Millie something that would make things awkward, right? 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 Mike passes it up to her before resuming his place, standing at the edge of the couch next to Charlie. She absentmindedly tears away at the wrapping as Caprice starts to slowly lean in to watch. Curiosity gets the better of me, and I follow her lead. Millie's smile drops. Caprice, what is... Charlie and Mike circle around to take a peek. They both seem just as shocked as Millie. <laughs> oh. Oh. As she tears away the rest of the paper, the gift fully realizes itself as a painting of Millie's mom. I'm not an artist by any stretch, but even I'm impressed by the quality of it even if I'm sure that's not the reason why everyone else in the room looks so stunned. I was originally going to do it myself. I had been working on it for months, but it just wasn't where I wanted it to be, and I needed it to be perfect. Eileen's the best in the biz when it comes to painting people. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> All 
also, hi, Mama. Hi, Neki. Welcome. Welcome. I'm. Oh, I. <laughs> I don't know how Millie's gonna take this. I don't. I don't know how Millie's gonna take this. I don't know how Millie's gonna react to this. I don't think it's gonna be in the way Caprice intended when she thought of this gift. Oh. I know you still miss her a lot, so I wanted to get you this. Something brand new of her. Like, a new memory of her, sort of. <laughs> Caprice speaks softly, the sincerity plain in her voice. That just makes the accompanying silence that much more painful. I thought maybe we could hang it up somewhere, together. <laughs> this I I'm in pain. I'm in pain. I I don't want you to forget your mom either, Millie. I wanted to prove that. I'm in pain. Oh wait, yeah, Millie's hairstyle is her mom's look. I I'm not. <laughs> but maybe with this we can move on too. This situation was already tense enough that I that I think that was possibly one of the worst things Caprice could have just said. Oh no, it was going so well. It was going so well. It was go <laughs> it was going so well. Uh. Time passes in total silence. Everybody waiting for any sort of response. is missing oh no oh no oh no oh no 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 oh huh her wedding ring oh no that's even worse no Well, that's not a big deal, I'm sure. Caprice, Caprice, put the shovel away. Put the shovel away. This this hole is big enough. This hole is big enough. Stop. Stop. Ugh. Not a big deal. It's part of who she was. Here it is. Here it is. Millie closes her eyes, transparently to push back some form of frustration, while the rest of us look on. Look, I appreciate it, but I can't accept this. I'm sorry. Huh? Hey, come on. Eileen only agreed to help with this because it was for you. People care about you, you know? <laughs> Caprice attempts to playfully keep the mood up, but her voice doesn't match her face. Her smile is strained and Millie avoids her gaze completely. Yeah, I can tell that Caprice was intending on saying, well, that's not a big deal because we can add it very easily. I can fix the painting and put it back in. But Millie just heard it's that the wedding ring is not a big deal. Uh -huh. I don't need your club to look after me. Well, one of them has to. Caprice, please stop. Millie's expression warps from its previously confused, hard-to-read state into one of anger, staring daggers into Caprice. Caprice, hey. Charlie's weak attempt at talking down her daughter has an undertone of resignation. It's too late to put this back in its box and everyone knows it. You surround yourself with negative people and experiences and then wonder why you feel so down oh, in the Oh, Caprice, dumps. please stop. Caprice, please stop. Oh, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. You aren't stupid. You know the club stuff isn't what this is about. 
I have no idea what this is about. You never try to explain anything, and when we do finally get you to open up, it's all a big contradictory mess. I'm being driven to drink. Thank you. Thank you for the high drink. Oh, this, this is what I was worried about, but also kind of what I was expecting slightly. I, I was just waiting. I was just waiting because I know everyone was just like putting on the performance, putting on the show. I was just waiting for the slip up to happen. And this wasn't just a slip up. This was a full face plant into the ground. This, oh boy. Thank you for the hydrate. Thank you for the posture check too. Let me stretch. Uh, replenish my tears. No tears at the moment. Just a big knot of tension inside. I'm sending the, the monster in to wash away the big knot of tension that this whole situation has created. Oh my goodness. I... Oh. Call me French bread because I'm pain. <laughs> Pan. Pure pain. Yeah, exactly. She's still grieving. She's... Grief is the kind of thing that, like, you... you... Everyone reacts differently to grief. And... Like, I understand where Caprice is coming from, too. I fully get it. I get it so much. She is trying her best to help her friend. But she does not realize... Like, Millie... What Millie says is a big contradictory mess because her feelings are a big contradictory mess. For her as well. She does not understand it, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> It's like, you can't explain something to someone else if you don't get it yourself. It's... <laughs> but Caprice doesn't even realize that. You can tell. You can tell. She just doesn't get it. It's like, there is absolutely no malice in there. She is trying so hard. She wants to fix things. But she doesn't realize her method is really not working. The volume continues to rise, even through clenched teeth. They're both close to breaking, and I'm dreading finding out which one cracks first. Yeah, exactly. I can see both sides. It's... They're both doing things wrong. But they... They can't see that. They don't realize it. That's the painful part. It's the fact that they... They're both just like, you just don't get it. You just don't get it. But they... They have no way of getting it at the moment so it's oh it's pain <sighs> oh i just don't want mom to be forgotten oh i don't want this reminder of mom because of some dumb ring that was not kind if it's so dumb then why are we all making such a big deal about your mom having one now That was also... That was mean. That was... Uh, if, if I was in this situation, I think I would be forcibly dragging Millie up the stairs at this point. This is the kind of situation where they, they're just going to keep going it, um, unless someone stops this. They're just going to keep going and it's going to get worse. And they're going to say mean things they don't actually mean. I'm... Ow. Ow. Caprice physically recoils back in anger, unsure of how to process that. Her mother keeps her eyes trained downward, fidgeting with the band on her finger. How can you even say that with a straight face? What's your problem? Uh, mm, exactly. A hint of anger turns a bad situation worse and worse and worse. It's like once you get to the point where you're starting to be defensive, that's... That's the part where, like, an argument or disagreement starts getting bad. Because as soon as you're in that defense mode, you're less likely to compromise because you are defending. You're defending yourself more then. And it's... That's the point where it's really, like, it's probably better to step away and cool down. I'm... Oh, I... <laughs> oh, 
Oh, sorry. Guess it's only dumb when it's important to me. Lesson learned. Mom and I love you. I just want you to talk to us. And I just want you both out of my life. Pelly. Millie, no. Not waiting for a rebuttal, Millie hastily grabs her coat from the coat rack at the door and opens it all in the span of a few seconds. I go to follow her on instinct before I stop dead in my tracks as she turns to face me. Stay here, Olive. Okay. I, I won't. Please. Oh. 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 My legs want to deny her more than anything, but my mind refuses to take another step. As the door slams behind her, my heart shatters. Turning my attention back to the couch reveals a totally different scene than the one that was there just minutes ago. Charlie slumps forward, her face buried deep in her hands. Oh, Aid. <laughs> Oh. oh, it's like, I am, I'm not crying, but I am feeling such like just an impending sense of dread. Like just such a sense of. Ugh. <laughs> That's how I feel. I feel. Ugh. <laughs> How do I feel right now? I feel... <laughs> oh, this... I... Mm, she probably does need time to... I, I was gonna say to cool down. I, I realized she just went out in the snow. That's... <laughs> I didn't mean to joke there. But I... She, she definitely needs time to step away and cool down. But I... Don't like leaving her like this. I, oh. This is the kind of situation that breaks people. It is, it is. I'm, I'm really worried about Millie. I'm, like, a little part of me really wants to, like, ignore that and go after her anyway, because I'm like, is, is she gonna, like, do something silly? Like, I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. Like, not even, like, like, the most severe scenarios i'm like i'm worried she's gonna go to like a convenience store and buy a bottle of vodka and down it or something like i'm i'm <laughs> i am going to hydrate yes thank you oh god this is painful oh my god <laughs> hey do you want to know a fun fact everybody you want to know a really fun fact? I'm in a really emotional situation right now in this game. The Outer Wilds DLC ending, I was also in a very emotional situation there. And yesterday, I've been watching Avatar The Last Airbender with my friends for the first time. I've never seen the cartoon before. And we're like, towards the end of season two. And that was also incredibly emotional. I am having a time. I am I am going through it right now. I was just... This is like I'm I'm in I'm in like the middle of like the emotion zone. I'm gonna have to decompress after this. Oh my goodness. I'm... You know exactly which episode I mean. Yes, th that. That's exactly where I was. Um in like the vaguest sense, uh the episode we left off on was uh Appa. <laughs> so been going through it. I'm like this is all the time all the time. I am You know what? I'm so I'm so glad I scheduled house flipper tomorrow. I'm <laughs> I'm very glad I scheduled House Flipper tomorrow. That's not going to be emotional. I'm going to decorate a house really nicely. And we're going to talk about nice, happy things. 
and I'm going to decompress. But like, I'm I'm saying it. I'm like, I'm not saying it in a negative way. I am loving it. I'm living for it. I am here for the emotions. I I love stuff that like hits me like that. Like stuff that gives me that emotional response is so powerful. It's so good. But wow, it sure is back to back at the moment. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm really going through it. Oh, but it's incredible though. I'm what what are we going to do here? What are we going to do here? Huh. Huh. Mike places a hand on one of her shoulders, giving it a supportive shake. He gently picks up the piece of art that unraveled everyone's best intentions for the night. It's a beautiful painting, Caprice. Thank you. I think Olive really has to talk to Caprice right now. I think that's the only thing that can happen here. I think Olive really needs to try and help Caprice understand a little bit. Because she doesn't. She doesn't understand. And that's that's why it's so painful, because she thinks she's doing the best thing she can, and it's just being thrown back in her face. It's no wonder she would get frustrated at that. Like, I'd, I'd get frustrated at that, too. Like, she's she's doing it out of, like, the, the purest goodness in her heart. And so to have that, like, be so... So violently rejected like that... It's gonna really hurt her too. Everyone is hurting. Everyone is hurting. Oh goodness. Oh, she's crying out. Oh. 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 And she said she was working on it for months. I know exactly. Like, even to the point where she wasn't. She didn't feel like she could do it justice herself. She got the best artist she knows to help with it. Like, she's put so much of her heart into this. So it's like, to have that rejected, she's going to take that as a rejection of herself too. She's going to be like, well, Millie is rejecting me because she put so much of herself into it. It's... Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Wordlessly, Caprice stands and leaves the room, slamming the door to the guest room behind her. <sighs> incredibly out of my element and with nowhere else to go, I head to the kitchen and bury all my emotions into the waiting pile of dishes, pots and pans. As I clean, I feel my face getting hotter and tears prick at my eyes. Oh no. Oh, a scene always makes you sob. It's so beautifully written. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> oh, it hurts so, so much. It... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely could cry right now, I think. It's it, it's only going to take like one more thing to tip me over the edge. I can feel it. I'm Ugh. I should have said something. I should have done something. I should have followed her. I should have done anything ex instead of just standing there. The night ends with Caprice and Charlie quietly leaving. Mike disappearing into his bedroom, and me falling asleep at the kitchen table, waiting for Millie to return. <laughs> thank you. Wannabe Weep, thank you so much for all the hydrates. Thank you. You're, you're, the, you're like replenishing my soul <laughs> as we go. Thank you so much. I just need like the occasional can thrown at my head. Just like snap out of it. Snap out of it. You're okay. You're okay. We can work through this. We can figure this out. Uh, please, she better come back. A few hours later. Yeah, everyone in chat hydrate too. Yes, we we gotta look after each other here. <laughs> All right, chat. Uh, everyone hydrate. Everyone pause to check. Everyone make sure you're comfy. Make sure you're comfortable. You're sitting up straight. If you're hungry, grab a snack. If you're feeling like you need a hug, get a comfy blanket. Hug it around yourself. Pretend it's me giving you a hug. We all look after ourselves here. We, we all look after ourselves. And Shura, hello, praying for me. Oh, thank you. I, I need it. I need the thoughts. 
I need to be kept in everyone's thoughts right now. I think I'm. I'm. Oh, I'm. 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 That's how I'm. That's how I'm doing. Bright lights on my closed eyes are enough to shock me awake from my sleep at the table. Groggily, I rub my eyes and attempt to shield them from the brightness. My neck so stiff from the awkward pose I can barely bend it. What time is it? Oh, you're standing at work while sick, so you can do none of those. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sending healing rays your way, Suzume. I hope you feel better soon. I hope your work's going well, at least. I'll give you the work, lurk, solidarity, support. <sighs> we got this. We can get through this. We can get through this. They can get through this. I feel like it's the kind of situation where, like, everything sucks. Everything is really bad in this moment. But everybody cares about each other so much that it can't stay this way. Like, it, it just cannot stay this way. It just will not everyone cares too much for that I, I think like if people didn't care then maybe it would stay like this and linger and get worse but because everyone really genuinely does care I it's I uh, I'm I'm so worried I'm, I'm worried oh hi Mike who seemed to have forgotten I was sleeping here meets my gaze and immediately apologizes under his breath he goes back to whatever he was doing. He, yeah, he can't sleep, can he? I, I'm, I'm not surprised in this situation. Oh, good. What time is it? It's getting late. Is it late or early? Oh, his tone is enough to alert me. With a start, I stand up, glancing at the wall clock. It's nearly 2 a.m. Oh no. I'm. Old. <laughs> oh, I wish the door was knocking right now. Hi, Bob. Hi, welcome back. Uh, I, I hope your work went well. Welcome back. Uh, you've joined. Right in the, um, in the middle of emotional turmoil. So. Uh, <laughs> Please be warned, there is emotional devastation at the moment. But if, if you want to come on in, you, you're welcome to stay here. All of the emotional support is appreciated. <laughs> you're about to ask, what was that? That was Barb. Barb is back from work. I think she is. It was work. I'm glad you got through it, at least. <laughs> but welcome. Welcome to um, Everything Happens So Much. I'm in pain. Like, positive, emotional. I love the cathartic emotional release from stuff like this. But I am in a lot of pain. I'm in a lot of emotional pain right now. I still believe. I still believe. I'm I'm so worried. I'm so worried right now. You can give emotional support. You were very good at that at the con. Oh, I see. Oh, the... I feel like you, you give off, like, very... Very like comforting vibes. Like you're you're the kind of person people would just trust. <laughs> so that makes sense. But uh welcome, welcome back. Um so it's Christmas. Millie and Caprice had a moment negative. Millie stormed out of the house. It's now two AM and she's not come back home. So that's where we're at right now. And I am incredibly worried. I'm incredibly worried she's going to be on the bridge next to the train tracks. I think she's possibly going to be on the bridge next to the train tracks. I... Th she's not back yet. I was going to go drive and see if I can find her. She left her phone here, so oh, I can't call. Oh, of course call. she left her phone here. Like, I don't, I don't think she's, like, in danger. Like, actively in danger or anything. I don't get that impression. 
but I am still extremely incredibly worried about her. And also, like, a little part of me is just expecting her to get drunk. Like, so many times she's been, like, stressful situation, and she just immediately starts drinking alcohol. So I'm I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm... I'm, <laughs> I'm worried. I don't register anything else once I hear that. Already dressed and ready to go, I go over to the front door and take my coat off the hook. I'll go out and find her. He looks me in the eyes for a while, the concern he showed for Millie being directed at me as well. You think you know where she is? I think I have an idea. I have a pretty good idea, yeah. I think, I think, I think me and Olive have the same idea. He pauses. Without further comment, he just nods, putting his keys back on the shelf. Stay safe. I will. <sighs> I can't believe we have two writers in the Elan universe who turn to drink when things hit the fan. I, I feel like uh, Millie can drink a considerable amount more than Aspen, to be fair. Aspen with her, like, I've had three beers, I'm out of it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was right. She's here. Striding up the long road, it looks like I was right on the money. Millie stands on the bridge, arms on the railing and a beer can in hand. I, 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 I called all of it. I, I knew all of it. I knew it. I, I just, I knew it. I knew it. I'm... Uh, arms on the railing and a beer can in hand. A few more sit in a bag beside her, a couple already empty. Yes. <laughs> mm. I make my way beside her and take a can for myself. There's a strange serenity to all this. As I sip the bitter beer, the moonlight's reflection almost seems to glow on the calm water's surface. Aside from the rare passing car behind us, we're entirely alone out here. Mind if I join you? <sighs> she gives a simple shrug. Millie looks completely burned out as she stares out over the slowly flowing river, barely having acknowledged my arrival. Her voice is quiet and husky when she speaks. Dad doesn't like me drinking around him, and I just... Ugh. I really needed to get out of there. Ugh. She swirls the can around in her hand, almost empty. Alone? That was the whole point of all of this. To me, it was. She barely gives me a glance, a jaded look that stops me right in my tracks from pushing more on the topic. The two of us stand in silence for a while as snow begins falling. This sucks. <laughs> huh. This just sucks for everyone. This... Uh, I'm glad we're here. I'm glad we found her, but this still sucks. Oh. Huh. Much as I'd like to comfort Millie, I don't know how to open the conversation. We both know the problem, or rather the many problems that she has right now. Maybe just... Being around is enough. Both of us grew up with a single parent, but beyond that, our lives have gone in such different directions. Mine ended up so simple, pared back as much as it possibly could be. Just me and mom eking out a living. Every day I came back to an empty apartment. The more time I spend with Millie, the more complex I see her life has become, 
to the point where it's overwhelmed her. The music is so quiet and gentle right now. It's so quiet. The tiniest, tiniest music. From her club disintegrating beneath her, to losing her mom, to the wedding and Caprice's reaction to it. The two losing the friendship they once had. I might want to help Millie untangle the vines constricting around her, but I don't know where to start. I'm not even sure if I can. Yeah, this is way, way out of Olive's pay grade right here. This is... <sighs> The two of us drink, alone together, on the bridge between her old life and the new. Oh, the bridge is so symbolic. <laughs> None of this is your fault. <laughs> I want to. I want to give everyone a hug. I, I want to give everyone a hug. Okay, never mind. I am crying. <laughs> there it is. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. I should have known. <laughs> Oh, there are the tears. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> she gives a cynical snort. Talk to me, please. I can't do much, but I can listen at least. Mm, thank you for the hydrate. Let me replenish. Replenish tears. <laughs> We're just getting started, sadly. I, 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 I do kind of. I did kind of figure that. We're not even like. We're still in Act Two, but please don't spoil. Please don't hint towards things to come. <laughs> please don't make comments like that. Please, please don't, don't make that kind of comment because it's a little bit spoilery. Uh. <sighs> what do you want to hear, Olive? More riveting tales about my dead mom? How sorry I am for being a terrible daughter? Oh no, here. I think I know what's going to happen now. I think this... The situation Millie's in right now, I think she's going to say a lot of hurtful things. I think she's going to say hurtful things that she doesn't fully mean, but she does kind of mean a bit. And it's going to be really painful. And I'm really worried. <laughs> uh, wanted so badly to make a story about a conflict, but one without a clear antagonist or even outwardly wrong ways of thinking. That's a really stressful line to walk. I can't even imagine. That is like such a tightrope and you somehow managed to stay on it the whole time. Like this whole time through. It's like, I fully understand where everyone's coming from. And I also fully see what people are doing wrong. It's... There, there isn't a like a right side and a wrong side here. That's what makes it, that's what makes it so gripping. That's what makes it so. That's what gives like that emotion or like reaction to me. Like if there was just a right and a wrong side, it wouldn't hit as hard as this. Because when when they're both in the right and also both in the wrong, it that's. That's that is that is like the spice. That <laughs> that's the emotional spice that makes it so so. If you know what I mean, I I, I do not have a word for it. I I'm just making noises. I, I'm just making noises. But yeah, I've got a feeling Millie's gonna say some hurtful things right now. I'm just like bracing myself for it. Maybe you just want to know more about why that stupid club is crumbling beneath my feet. Or is this talk about how I wrapped you, the last person who gave me any sense of normalcy, into this big performative lie? She turns to me, her voice rising, drops of beer flying out of the can. 
I can stand there and take it, even as she gets angrier, and even as she begins to take it out on me. Yeah, this is what I... this is what I thought. Let's get it all out there! After all, everything is Millie's fault! She's the bad guy! Why can't she just accept things as they... She catches herself, stopping to stare at me as I look back in stoic silence. The regret on her face is clear. I'm sorry. <sighs> Millie cradles her head in her hands and leans back into the railing. It reminds me of a scared child hiding from a storm. I'm so sorry. It's, it's all just... It's so hard. I know it is. You must hate me now. Just like everyone else. No, nobody hates you. No. I don't. It's so painful that she can't see that. Uh. You regret spending Christmas here, at least. I don't feel that way, either. Oh... I just want to listen, Millie. <laughs> oh, this art. Oh. Oh, this moment is so... <laughs> oh. Where do I even begin? Wherever you want. I, I mean, like, you're a writer, I guess, the beginning. Capri seems like a good start. Millie's face sours. She's so... <laughs> I don't understand why she... Ever the writer, Millie edits herself in real time, searching for the right words. She treats everything like some childish rivalry between us. I'm desperately trying to hold my life together, but does she care? It's honestly hard to tell. Because it's always no. about Caprice. What Caprice wants. Oh, the... Oh. She pulls everyone around her into her orbit, whether they like it or not. Oh, I think it's, I think it's time for the jealousy to rear its ugly head. Uh, thank you for the hydrate. So, I do my best with it. It doesn't matter how much bending or verbal acrobatics it takes, I will always try to solve things delicately. There she is, thrashing around like a bull in a china shop, undoing the peace and normalcy people build for themselves. Once she gets excited, it's as if people's feelings don't even matter. Join the art club! Who cares if there's already a perfectly good one? Let me use the booth for your club! Oh, what do you know? Looks like we're gonna be family! She chucks her beer can off the bridge. It lands in the water with a subdued and muted plop. Her breathing is heavy as she glares into the foggy distance. I'm not even gonna comment on the littering here. That's... That's how, like, this... How tense I am right now. I'm... Do you hate her? I love her! <laughs> she looks back to me. Tears begin streaming down her face. I love Caprice. I always have. She's my sister. Mm. Oh. <laughs> uh. Millie throws herself into me, clutching me as tight as she can. Her sobbing is loud and painful, echoing down the bridge. I hate this. Why can't everything go back to the way it was? I don't need our parents to be married for us to be family. I don't want a replacement for what I've lost. It doesn't have to be a replacement. It... I don't think anyone is intending for this to be a replacement. Like... It's an addition, but I fully understand why she would feel that way as well. Why won't they understand that? No. 
Oh, I think they do. <laughs> as awful as I feel, I remain silent. So many words come to mind. Condolences, assurances, all of them feel unnatural and forced, so none of them fill the air. I wish so badly I could give Millie the peace she deserves and the happiness to pursue it. But the stark truth that I'm forced to face as my coat dampens with her tears is that I can't. There's nothing I can offer. Only useless platitudes. I'm unequipped. Out of my depth. So with the absence of any answers, I return the hug and hold her tight until eventually, mercifully, the trembling stops. I might not be able to fix everything, but I still want to help. I just want her to be happy, no matter what it takes. Please be happy. <sighs> oh. oh. Hey, Millie. Let's head home early tomorrow. She shakes her head, still wrapped in my arms. I don't feel like I have a home to go to anymore. You can stay with me if you want. <laughs> for as long as you need. Oh. <laughs> I think I love you, Oliver. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> This wasn't right now. <laughs> oh, I'm. <sighs> Oof. Oof. Uh -huh. Words we've said to each other before, in front of others to keep up our convenient lie. Now, though, with no one to hear them but me, they sound totally different. My heart feels full to the brim and broken in two. I find it hard to piece together the right response, or if there's even a right thing to say at all in this moment. Eventually, however, six words come to me. I think I love you too. <laughs> oh, I thought I'd be so happy for this moment, and instead I am just broken. Huh. <laughs> thanks caps thanks <laughs> yay isn't this great we're past the fake dating arc they've realized they finally realize it's great i'm i'm having a great time Woo! yay <laughs> yeah uh, is everyone having a good time Oh, goodness. This is reminding me of a, a time I was at an anime convention. I Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent right now. I really want to share this. As well, I think I may have told this story before. I don't fully remember. But uh, I was at an anime convention with friends a while ago. And they had, like, screening rooms for movies. Like, movie rooms where you could watch a movie. Uh, I went with my friends to watch a movie that, like, touted itself as some kind of, like, sci-fi interesting thriller type movie. Went there with my friends, we watched the movie. It was the most depressing movie about, like, how people live their lives in, like, their final moments. Like, it was so emotional and heavy. Like, incredible film. It was a really good film. But we went in there expecting something, like, light and interesting and, like, oh, cool, what's going on here? And we left that room just feeling so many emotions. But of course, we were at an anime convention. It was like late in the evening. We were all like, okay, we're heading back up to our hotel room now. We we need to go decompress a bit. We got into the lift. Uh, and then as we got into the lift, another girl came into the lift. And she was buzzing. She had glow sticks. She was like 
waving them around and she just came into the lift and she was like, Woo! Is everyone having a good time? And me and my friends were just stood there looking like someone had just, like, stolen our lunch money. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was, it was such a funny moment because it, like, it instantly lifted the mood. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we all just burst out laughing at this moment. But it's, it was just, like, the funniest thing. Just all of us there, so solemn. Just, she just entered the lift, just like, is everyone having a good time? And then kind of, like, slowed down a bit as she looked at us. <laughs> And it was, it was just, honestly, it was exactly what we needed in that moment. Because we were all just, it's it's like the one convention memory that will never leave me now. Because it was so funny. <laughs> but I can't even imagine what she must have thought. I'm running into the lift and seeing like four or five people just stood there so solemn. <laughs> it was really funny. But uh, all, all right, movie buffs, time to ID this movie. I think it was, uh... I'm trying to remember the name. I think it's uh, Death Death Notice Ikigami. Death Notice Ikigami. It was a like a live action film, and we went into it and we were like, "Oh, is this gonna be some sort of like cool Death Note ish kind of thing?" Because the the program didn't tell us much about it and we didn't know much about it. But um, it was a, a very emotionally hard hitting movie. It was a really good movie. But very good. Also, I see platinum. Hello, thank you for the reset for seventeen months. I love just the <laughs> the gentle destruction. But uh, thank you for the reset. Welcome. Wow, twenty twenty three. No, no, it's this was a while ago now. It was it was a live action film. Hold on. Lyriel one by. Uh, yeah, it's a two thousand and eight movie. Yeah, movie from 2008. And yeah, we went into it not really knowing much about it. And it was a really, really good film. But also, I was slightly amazed that they chose to screen that at an anime convention. Because it was it was not lighthearted at all. <laughs> really good film, though. I, I do recommend it if you want like a... Like a a really like poignant film like that. It's it's also been a little while, and I we had all had a couple of drinks at that point too, so that may have heightened the emotions a bit as well. But it's like it's the funniest thing to be just always remembering that is everyone having a good time, <laughs> waving the glow sticks around. Good times, anyway. Yeah, twofold is a happy, comfy game about silly little club activities. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Anyway, let's let's continue. Let's continue. Is everyone having a good time? Woo! <sighs> oh, Act Three. Act Three. Memories made. Oh, we did it. We did it. We finished Act Two. Out of character. Oh, Act Three time. Here we go. Oh, I, d I don't know what to expect. When we told Mike we were leaving early, he didn't question it or protest. I wonder if Millie would have felt better if he did. Thank you for the hydrate. Hydrate to begin. <laughs> Thank you very much. The fine line between wanting your space and hoping your loved ones reach out for you is delicate. And it's one Millie has struggled to walk for a long, long time. Oh, I usually save at the start of each act. I, sh I should do that. Yeah, let me save here. Have I saved, like, at all? I, I I feel like with visual novels, I only really save when there are choices. I'm... I'm the kind of person with visual novels where I, I will, like, I'll save at the start of an act. I will save when there's a choice, but otherwise I don't really save. Because they usually have a skip button, and I can just, like, press tab and let the text skip through. <laughs> Other games, I am, like, always so self-conscious about, like, not losing my progress. But I think visual novels are much nicer in that sense to, like, 
load it up and just be like, well, I can just skip through to where I was. It's it's not like where I feel like I have to save all the time. But I I do often save at the start of each act, so I'm I'm glad I did that. <laughs> but no, I I don't really save. I save loads when there are um options. When there's choices in games, I save all the time, but otherwise just kind of don't. The fine line between wanting your space and hoping your loved ones reach out for you is delicate. And it's one Millie has struggled to walk for a long, long time. My apartment is scarce. The heating is faulty at the best of times. It's loud during the night with the roads below ever active. But it's all I can offer her and the best she's got. Shivering from the cold morning air, I open the door to our ah, home. Ah, oh, oh, hurts a bit. Hurts a bit. Oh, on the other hand, you never save unless you're leaving. Yeah, I'm. It really does depend on the game for me. It's like if I'm in a situation where I might lose progress in something, I will save very, very often. But uh, often, like when I do save, I don't often go back to saves as well. Like, I save just in case, but I don't usually need it a lot of the time. Whew. Anyway, hold on. Actually, you know what I want to do very quickly? I just want to find something. Very, very quickly. I'm pretty sure I have this on my computer somewhere. Where is it? Where are you? Oh, where is this thing I'm trying to find? It's not that one. Here we go. Me. My badge of honor. That's not actually the one I was looking for, but it, it'll do. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm shrinking myself. Oopsie. Uh, <laughs> it's not the one I'm looking for, but that'll do. I'm just like scrolling through my, my memes folder. Like... <laughs> My reaction images. I, I'm i so sure I have this image. Where the heck is it? Do I not have it? Have I not? There's no way I've just not saved this. I guess I'll have to Google it. Here we go, let me just Google it real quick. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. That's the one I want. <laughs> Hold on a second. This is me right now. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's me right now. <laughs> I love that I have a meme folder. I do. I've got I've got so much useless stuff in here. I've got so many images saved as like reaction images that I've never used as a reaction image in my life and I cannot think of a scenario where I would use it as a reaction image in my life but I still have them saved. Like where's, where's a good example? Like, I don't know why I have this. I don't know what scenario I would ever use this in. I don't know why I have it, but I have it. I have it saved. I will always have it saved. And, um... What else? <laughs> what else do I have? I'm... This! Like, I'm, I'm never gonna use this in my life. Why do I have this saved? Doesn't matter. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> I need to get back to the game. <laughs> but yeah, I have a I have like a whole a whole folder full of just like irrelevant images that I see and I like. I'm I'm just like, I like this, I'm gonna save it. For one day. Maybe I'll do a like a showing off all my meme stream sometime. <laughs> get to treat everyone to the, the classics like this one. The I'm gay and in tears. Wait, this one fits now as well, actually. I'm going to keep this. This is also me right now. Then <laughs> This is all 
also me right now. Also, Zarok, hello. Thank you for the posture check. And thank you for the hydrate wannabe weave. I will have a big stretch. And I will have a sip of my monster. So just my like little moment to de-stress a bit. Actually, I'm just going to stick these in the corner. I'm gay and in tears. Hurts just a little bit. <laughs> you can go like here. I can go there. There we go. <laughs> uh, this is me. This is me. Uh, you were doing a drive-by care package, but only achieved half. Oh, it was it was a collaborative effort. A collaborative effort. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for throwing things at me too. <gasps> yes, Bob. I would I would love some some gay throwable things. It would be good. Uh, so how often do I experience gay panic? Like like seeing attractive woman and panicking? Um, honestly, not that often. Mostly just when I'm playing games like this. <laughs> yeah. It's these kind of games where I end up being like... Oh, blah, blah, blah. But otherwise, not really. And behind the smile, hello! Welcome, welcome. Shivering from the cold open... From the cold morning air, I open the door to our home. Our home. <gasps> Mr. Moe's here. <gasps> Hello. Hi. Oh. Oh. Mr. Moe's here. Oh. Uh, well, you're gonna go get some rest. Oh, I hope you rest well. Thank you for stopping in. Thank you for the, the drive-by care package. Oh, I'm so glad Moe's here. The small welcome is enough to make me jump and instinctively hide my free hand poorly behind my back. Before her luggage she had originally taken for the trip and any of her own personal items she wanted to bring from her house, she had asked about Mr. Mo. Yeah, that's the priority. That's the first thing to ask about. My apartment allows small pets, and that was all she needed to hear before retrieving his carrier. That being said, I'm not sure if the word small best describes him, his friendly headbutt managing to push me back a step. He is so large. I love him. Another sound of an opening door, followed by the dragging of feet. Within seconds, Millie emerges from the hallway. She wiped some sleep from her eye, woken up by the commotion. <sighs> Good morning. You were out early. Morning. Ah, uh, yeah. I was hoping to get back before you woke up. Foiled by Mo. He. Seems so. Oh. <sighs> to you too. <sighs> Thanks for the commentary. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, Olive. I'll stop meowing now. I'm sorry. Please don't break the fourth wall and look at me that way. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean to. No, I. I did mean to keep meowing. I definitely meant to keep meowing. Meow. <laughs> she meets my drooping expression with a giggle. <laughs> If it's any consolation, I'd much rather still be sleeping. I take no joy in your defeat. She punctuates her declaration with a very loud, very long yawn. She's sleepy. When her hands, when her hand comes down from her mouth and her eyes open, I notice them slowly drag downwards, settling on the modest bouquet hidden hastily behind my back. <gasps> Romantic Olive? My eyes follow hers, choosing to stare at the bundle of flowers rather than dare to make eye contact as I stammer the words out. I figured, uh, well, if we're gonna do this for real, yeah. we should get our story straight. <laughs> oh, huh. 
I've been rehearsing this in my head since the idea came to me yesterday afternoon, and I still can't believe I'm going through with it. So... With a deep breath, I pull my arm out from behind me and shove it directly to my front as fast as I'm able. It's not an extravagant arrangement, but I tried my best to pick out something she'd like, given what was available. I still can't bring myself to meet her eyes, choosing instead to train my gaze to the floor as I deliver my ramblings. Oh <laughs> yeah, don't think they can get their story straight. Too gay for that. So true. I think I love you, Millie. I don't want things to end after a semester together. Would you like to go out sometime? Oh, bless them. This is so sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> yeah, auto mod is fine with gay, but not if it has um, five Ys, apparently. But we fixed that now, don't worry. I keep my eyes firmly trained anywhere but her as I wait for her response. I don't know what I'm expecting. We decided to make things legitimate out on the bridge and confirm things the morning after, but I still find my heart beating out of my chest regardless. I wait for an answer, but nothing ever comes. Did she not get what I'm trying to do? Am I just being dumb? Wouldn't be the first time, I guess. Uh, how was I smoother in a fake relationship than... My mind goes blank as her hand envelops mine. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I sneezed. My eyes finally shoot up and meet hers again. I met with a heavy blush, mirroring mine, I'm sure, and a large, warm smile that I feel like I haven't seen from her in forever. Thank you for the posture check, too. Let me have a big stretch. Stop looking at the floor. Look up straight. Be confident. Be confident. You love each other. You love each other. Give her a little kiss. Give her a little kiss. Give her a little moi. Please. I hope. <laughs> I'd love to. Yay! <laughs> I don't have a response past loosening my grip on the poor flowers, relinquishing them to their new owner. Only after they're out of my hands do I notice small imperfections from afar. A slight wilt on a single petal, an unpleasant trim where a flower meets its stem. Nevertheless, Millie gazes to them fondly, slowly admiring them. Guess that's that then. Yay! It's official. What can I say? You won me over. I love how they're both blushing as well. It's very sweet. Even as she speaks, she never looks up to face me directly, still enamored by her gift. That story of yours was something else, you know. That last chapter was a real tearjerker. <laughs> she cradles the bouquet in her arm, allowing her to easily remove a lone flower, a faded pink rose. With all of the care and tenderness that I lacked when shoving the flowers in her face, she gently presents it to me. That's... That's so lovely. I'm really looking forward to see where you take it next. That's so lovely. Oh. She really is a romantic. She... <laughs> Millie is so romantic. I take the flower from her, our eyes finally meeting after a morning of active avoidance. I'm not much of a writer, but I'll try not to disappoint. My writing class is over, done. With any luck, I'll never have to step inside that room again. Even after my passing grade, I still never felt confident in my ability to put words to paper. Not really. For the first time, though, I find myself excited to start on this story. How could I not be with a co-author like her? Oh. That's so cute. This is... My heart is so warm. Several days later. The last rays of sunlight are just barely peeking in from the window. The cold writing club room struggling to warm up again after the winter break. 
After moving out and finally getting some space to breathe from all the pressure in her life, I thought the last thing Millie would want to do would be to start up the writing club again. Yet here we are, sticking to the same schedule she made before the break started. She sent out a message yesterday to the group to mixed reception. Heather was the first to reply, sending out a sarcastic yay. Darren never responded, and Tanya sent in almost too many happy face emotes. New year, new club, huh? Uh, yeah. I hope so. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I meant it to sound optimistic, but nothing about Millie's smile seems hopeful. Hey, come on. Don't disappear into your head. It'll be fine. It'll be good. Mm. It'll be great. Millie? Sorry, I know you're trying to help. I, I just... You're just catastrophizing. It's okay, I get it. I don't want to get my hopes up. Not that I'm trying to be all doom and gloom, but... Hope for the best, expect the worst. Yeah. I'm a little tired of trying to make it perfect just in case it'll resonate this time. Whatever will happen, will happen. Oh, to be fair, that's probably a much healthier mindset in a situation like this. I'm just going to enjoy it. Yes! That'll have to be enough. Oh, that is more than enough. He... Millie gives me a reassuring look, no fake smile or measured body language in sight. She takes a sip of coffee and gets back to tidying up the room. I can't think of a single thing that could be fun about leading this writing club. On the other hand, there must be something besides pride keeping Millie here. I mull it over a bit, deciding not to press. Whatever it is, I'll find out soon enough. Well, like, honestly, personally, I think it's a combination of... Millie, like, so much is changing around her, she wants to cling to something and not have it change. And also the fact that she just genuinely loves writing. Like, she, you can tell she adores writing. Like, I think those are the main reasons why she wants to keep the club going. <laughs> Thank you three for making it. I know it's been a while, so how about we start with a simple warm-up exercise? Gotta say? I am surprised Heather's here. I'm just waiting for her to make me mad. Ugh. I barely even like stretching. Can't we do one of those word games? Oh? Yeah, Millie. I think this club is at its best when you act like a preschool teacher. How about we practice phonetics? Oh. <sighs> If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Heather is here. <laughs> Shake her. <laughs> Can you slap her? I, I do not condone violence. But also, I'm looking away. <laughs> I'm also looking away. If anything happened to happen... To Heather, then that that would suck. Uh, what a shame! What a shame! I'm not paying attention. If anyone did, <laughs> Aline is so mean, but Heather's VO had so much fun. Yeah, you you can tell. She's like the embodiment of Heather. Is it's so Heather? It's so Heather. Flawless, impeccable. Makes you want to push her out of the room. Do you ever shut your... Cut it out or leave. We're not doing this today. Hey! Good job, Millie. I'm proud of her. Millie closes the book she was reading from, giving both Tanya and Heather a firm glare. Tanya sighs and mutters an apology, shifting to sit in a slightly more attentive posture. Heather scoffs loudly because of course she does. Leave? And what? You'll stand here talking to an empty room. Whew. Whew. I just 
want one meeting where we can try to be adults who share a common love for the craft. Whew. Ah, my heart's bleeding. Really? Oh. Girl boss Millie Slayer, yes. I'm I'm so here for a certain Millie. I'm so happy. Uh, when you were recording for the first time, they were like, I wanted to voice in an LM game forever, and then it ended up being Heather. <laughs> like the un ultimate monkey's paws, like the monkey's paw curls. Oh, that I I would I feel like it would be such a fun role to voice though. Like such a phenomenal job. Like Heather is so hateable. Like it's so perfect. So well done. I'm <laughs> I'm not fighting with you, Heather. Like what like one thing I would like as well is like I I really want to get into voice acting properly. It's something I do want to like focus on more in this year. It's some I I say that half the year's already gone. Where where's the year gone? But uh I think it would be really fun to voice like an evil role, like a, like a villain role. I think it would be really, really fun. I would love to do that. And I think I'd probably be able to do a pretty decent job of it. I don't know. It would depend on the role, but I, I think I could, I think I could pull off the villainous act quite well, possibly something a bit different to what anyone would expect from me, you know? Everyone thinks I'm so kind and comfy and nice. Wouldn't it be fun to just destroy things a little, you know? Wouldn't it be interesting? I'd like that. I'd enjoy that. <laughs> I think it'd be fun. <laughs> anyway, back to this. Uh, he... We can just move on to that exercise. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh, you're still here. Failing another class? Shut up, Heather. Okay, Heather, you can... Leave? Leave? <laughs> Again with that? Then what? You'll kick out Tanya for not respecting the art enough? You're acting real high and mighty today. Darren's already bailed. You don't have anyone left to try and impress. Why is she still here? Why is she still here? I don't get it. I do not get it. I don't know why she's still here. She says his name with extra vitriol. Something about Darren not being here seems to have sparked an additional ire in Heather as she harshly tilts her head to the empty seat in the room. Still, she stands and takes the pen out of Millie's hands with one motion. With a flourish, she writes her name on the club attendance sheet on the podium. She's having fun. Why? I'm just. Oh, I have. She doesn't deserve to have fun if the, that's her idea of fun. She doesn't deserve to have her fun here. I would kick her out. I would kick her out. I would have no no tolerance for that kind of behavior. I feel like it's so mean and uncalled for. I, I would be. I would be the first to be like, okay, you're getting out of here right now. Because that is cruel and mean and spiteful and I'm not here for that <laughs> uh. Heather slams the door behind her on her way out leaving Millie, Tanya and I in a wake of tense silence uh, I want to see Darren again I want to see Darren I, I miss him the rest of the club went by a little bit smoother, but Tanya was obviously out of it. Millie sprang back surprisingly quickly after Heather's exit, shifting into a couple short writing exercises before doing a group prompt. The three of us took turns developing a story one paragraph at a time. Mostly. Millie wrote her paragraphs, and while I struggled to do a few lines, Tanya basically gave up after one sentence. Oh no. Right at the end of the session, Darren texted in several times, apologizing for missing the meeting after a nap gone wrong. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I was I was so worried he was going to just fully bail. I should have I shouldn't have worried. I should have trusted him. Darren I don't think Darren would just bail without saying anything. 
he would feel too guilty. <laughs> On her way out, Tanya invited Millie and I out to a bar. Millie declined, so here we are instead at my apartment. Home. That's what I said. Can you even believe it? Me too. I also said... Mr. Mo purrs pleasantly, sprawling out into Millie's lap and pushing his head into her hand with every pet. I love Mr. Mo so much. I love Mr. Mo. <laughs> Why was that a perfect copy? I've got him pretty good at meowing. <laughs> oh, there was a really funny time one time where we were we were looking after like a, a friend's cat and like I was in the back seat of the car my mum and Xander were in the front seats uh, the cat was in the back with me and he kept meowing and every time he meowed I would meow back in response and Xander turned around and he was like why is he meowing so much but it was right as I meowed and he thought that all of the meows had been the cat he didn't realize I was also meowing because we sounded so similar. I managed to like perfectly mimic him. <laughs> so he was here just thinking that this poor cat was just meowing away in the bag. But we were having like a full two-sided conversation. <laughs> it was great. Meow. 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 That's my Tiffany impression now. My Tiffany impression is Or occasionally <laughs> She's she's a very high pitched cat. It's very cute. That was bad. Yeah. She shrugs. Are you doing okay? <sighs> so the types of characters that Liri could voice are one villain, two literal cat. I could also do awkward nerd pretty well. Awkward British nerd. This is my awkward British nerd voice. Hi, how's it going? Hey, nice to see you. Uh, welcome. Um, hi. Uh, oopsie. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. Yeah, it's just me. Never mind. <laughs> in my three in my three roles. She thinks over the question in her head a few times. Then she rests her head against mine, nuzzling slightly. Her hair is soft and fluffy, smelling of coconut shampoo. Oh. <laughs> yeah, actually. I am. Oh. It's good to be home. It's so bittersweet. It's so bittersweet. Like, this is home? But the fact that she's not at the apartment with Haley and Caprice really... Like, that's not fixed yet. It makes it so bittersweet. I'm... Ugh. I should be happy, but I'm. there's still so much lingering under the surface that does need to be dealt with. It's... <laughs> I can't fully enjoy the moment yet. Her voice melts there as Mr. Mo gives a big yawn and stretches so wide he ends up halfway on her lap and mine. When we left the writing club, she didn't bother writing down a date for the next meeting. At first. Oh, a first. Oh yeah, that's a first. That is a first. Instead, we spoke about other things. What to do for lunch, how we'll need to buy paper towels, even just the weather. I settle in... <laughs> I settle in closer to Millie and run my hand over Mr. Moe's back, shedding his white fur all over the couch. Thanks, by the way. You're welcome. For what? For bringing the coffee. And even Aww. if the meeting itself wasn't great, I still... Ha. <sighs> she pauses and shakes her head. <laughs> I just mean thank you for always doing your best alongside me, too. This is so sweet. Ah. 
If we weren't dating, I'd probably be able to come up with a better response. To improvise whatever would make a good story, to give a reply to further our arcs. I'm not actually good at any of that. The thought of sharing how happy she makes me, how she gave me the strength, how comfortable this all is sitting together, it melds together into a tangled mess of new emotions that I don't have words for yet. I love you, Millie. Those words say it all, though. Those words work. I love you too, Olive. <laughs> oh. Okay, we're on to a few days later now. Whew. I'm just gonna save, and I'm... I'm thinking at the moment, it's still a little earlier than I usually end the stream, but that feels like a good spot to leave it at for next time, because I don't want to like start getting into too many things and then running over on time, because I'm also a little bit hungry too. I, I want to get some dinner. But that feels like a, a good stopping point, a good, a good pause point until next week. Until next Twofold Tuesday. So I'm going to save there. I'm going to leave it at... Leave it at that for now. And continue to just love this game. I love this game. I love it so much. I love it so much. <laughs> Millie ends next week. That is so ominously worded. <laughs> I'm terrified about the wording there. <laughs> We're not ending Millie. We might be ending the, the acts. The Millie acts. The Millie path. Not Millie herself, please. Please don't end Millie. She has she has so much to live for. <laughs> but yes, with that I shall bloop. Oh, I left all the notes up on the on the page. Right, where can I put these? Uh, they're kind of above me, which doesn't really help for seeing them. But I'm just gonna like keep them here. That's the mood of today. Oh, wait, I love how the hat almost perfectly placed itself on my head, too, on the, the shikishi on the wall. <laughs> almost perfect. Almost. There we go. There, I like that. But yes. But yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. I'm, I love this game. I love this game so much. I'm, I'm so happy to be playing playing it but I'm like I am I have been like run through the emotional ringer recently I am I'm so <laughs> I'm feeling so much I'm feeling so many things I am really excited to just switch my brain off tomorrow tomorrow I'm just gonna play house flipper I'm gonna talk about um uh, uh anything light I'm gonna talk about really cool light things. It's gonna be great. Um, I'll talk about uh, dice. I only said dice because there's dice in front of me. My brain is empty right now. <laughs> but uh, this this has been so fun. I love this game. It's so good. Oh wait, next week will be ended by Millie. Oh, I I wouldn't put that past her. I I think she has the power to do that. But yes, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. Oh, Millie Act 2 is one of your favorite stretches of the entire game. I can see why. I can fully see why. It's so... It hits so hard. It hits so, so hard. Ah, oh, but thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. Let's, let's find a raid target. Let's see who is around to send a raid to. Who we got? Because then I can go and have some dinner, because uh, I... I didn't eat like a full lunch today because I wasn't hungry at lunchtime, but now I'm really hungry. <laughs> I've realized my mistakes. I need to go get some dinner. Right, who's on? Who we got? Who we got? What are we feeling? What are we doing? Who's been streaming for how long? Oh, I had a moment where I'm like, oh, uh, Purple Coffins is live. Because we stream at the same time and I usually miss it. But I think she's ending as well, so <laughs> never mind. We, we start and end at the same time. Who 
else? Uh, oh, there's Corey, but I think Corey might be in a situation of Final Fantasy XIV spoilers for me. So I uh, probably shouldn't head that way. There's a few people around. Should I raid someone I haven't raided before? <gasps> Wait a second. Hold on. Uh, I was raided the other day by Sweet Note VA, who seems really, really sweet. I, I was I was looking up looking up her channel afterwards, and I was like, "You seem very sweet. I'm gonna throw you a follow." But a uh, Sweet Note VA is actually live right now, playing Horse Club Adventures. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna go we're gonna go over to the Horse Club Adventures. It's horse time. Yeehaw! Well, that's 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 a like cowboy. This is like horse girl. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you that way. Let's 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 head over for some horse club adventures, living our horse dreams. That's one thing. Like, I was never a, a horse girl growing up. I I knew a lot of my friends who were like obsessed with like ponies, and and riding horses and stuff. I was I was never that girl. I was the I was the I want to be a pop star kind of child. <laughs> I, I was the one where I was like, yeah, I'm going to be Britney Spears when I'm older. That didn't quite work out. But, uh... but yes, let's, let's head over and enjoy some horse club adventures. But uh, here we go. Here is the raid message. If you're subbed, we have comfy. If not, we have hearts. We will send the Two Folk Tuesday Lyri raid over to... Sweet note VA. And enjoy some horse adventures. And I will go and eat food. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much everyone for joining me today on this roller coaster of emotions. I'm like, I I love this game. I love this game so much. I'm so excited for next week too. We'll be getting into act three and see what happens there. But yes, it's been a really nice stream. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. I hope everyone has a lovely rest of the day. I'll be back tomorrow for some hopefully no emotions for House Clipper 2. No, not, not no emotions. That sounds bad. Lighthearted. Lighthearted House Clipper. <laughs> That's a better way of wording it. But yes, that is it from me for now. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye.